Today, this platform is all set to unfold an event of this evening's VSIT Hackathon 22. Good evening and a warm welcome to our dignitaries, our honorable judges, faculty members, and all my dear participants. I, Ms. Siddhi Kolwankar, will be the host for today's pitching round. And I, Ms. Kashish Bhanushali, will be the co-host for this evening. We are extremely honored and delighted to share this outstanding platform of VSET Hackathon 22 with you all. We welcome you all to the pitching round of VSET Hackathon 22. I feel proud while saying that this year we have reached the milestone of more than 90 teams participating in our hackathon from all over the country. We would like to appreciate the great efforts contributed by our talented participants for undertaking 30 hours of non-stop coding. Let's acknowledge the great success of VSET Hackathon 22. First and foremost, we would like to take an opportunity to give our praiseworthy and hearty thanks to all our event sponsors for the logistic and financial support they have extended to all of us for the event. Title sponsor, Dear Digital, powered by Napsums Technologies and G Systems, co-powered by Software AG and Jibber Networks, technology partner, Taskade, Coding Partner Gigs for Geeks, Streaming Partner StreamYard, Certificate Partner Give My Certificate, Media Partner Lokmat, Community Partner JetBrains, Broadcasting Partner Cafe Cinefx Studios. Let's witness a short video of our sponsors. Let me now introduce to you all a panel of judges for the event. Mr. T. Chetan Manjeshwar, he is an alumni of VSIT and has joined us from Google, California. He is a product manager at Google with more than 12 years of experience in the industry. With focus on building, designing and landing multiple consumer products across the globe, used by millions of people. He is passionate about technology and has in-depth experience handling data, applying ML and AI on transactions and building products and features to simplify user experience at Google. He developed ML-based risk engines for Google Pay India, pioneered the first open source real-time payment rails to drive financial inclusion, represented Google in Product Council of Mocha Loop working with Gates Foundation, Jigsaw, Scheme Futures, among a consortium of other payment firms and government organizations. Currently, he is focused on US markets and leads the transaction features for Google Pay building secure integrations and financial intelligence value add features through machine learning. The next judge on the panel we have is Mr. Boston Cherian. Mr. Boston Cherian is currently a leader at CRED and has also designed the same. He pursued his bachelor's degree, degree and master's in the field of information technology. Further, he also pursued MBA from the Sikkim Manipal University by distance learning. He also developed and built the Book My Show instant app for movie listing. He has worked as a senior Android developer and lead architect of Book My Show for more than two years. He was a senior application engineer at Raw Engineering for four years. He also has experience with other big companies like Lenskart, 
pop shot and sunay sidan the next judge we have is mr shotnik roy mr shotnik roy roy is the co-founder of hyper exchange he was forbes 30 under 30 list he became a mechanical engineer from srm university he completed his post graduation from stanford university he has featured in a case study in pm narendra modi's pm ua 2020 and is a senior mentor for pm ua he is the principal investment partner at dristikon ventures he has also been delivering formal lectures at the techno india university he has numerous achievements to his name such as economic times 100 fastest growing companies in india 2022 financial times top 500 companies in asia pacific 2022 retailers association of india retail startup of the year 2022 and many more the next judge on the panel we have is mr arif bhatkar mr arif bhatkar is the head of information technology security at, at godrej infotech limited he completed his btech in electronics and telecommunications post graduate in program cyber law and multiple certificates including cissp cism iso 27001 lead auditor and dsci certified privacy lead assessor he is a highly accomplished technology and security leader with proven ability to lead successful corporate information security and technology operations that align with business goals he also has an expertise in the area of cyber security solution development organizational excellence program management and process improvement He has demonstrated success in building consensus consensus among key stakeholders across a range of business segments as well as managing complex vendor relationships and multi vendor projects. He also has experience in managing cyber security for IT and manufacturing sector. Next we have Mr Hemal Shah. Mr Hemal Shah is an enterprise solutions architect. mobile banking applications and banking platform integration at lloyds banking group he has over 13 years of experience in architecture designing developing and delivering complex digital and mobile first applications and required back end services for mobile and digital apps he possesses a strong portfolio of highly rated mobile applications in app store some of which have 100k plus installations He has demonstrated strong skills in different types of mobile application development via native, hybrid and mobile web. He has also contributed in developing mobile center of excellence at various organizations. His expertise lies across both consumer and enterprise mobile or digital applications. He is currently working to expand key technical skills around IoT and machine learning. So This are our judges for the for the final round and we are extremely grateful to have their extreme presence. Before the commencement of the pitching round, let's have a look towards the perk provided by our sponsors. Dear Digital, it is going to provide the following opportunities. All the participants who wants to apply for internships via the link provided will get internships for a month. If found deserving, will get a month paid internships the link for the same is provided geeks for geeks geeks for geeks is gro- going to provide the following opportunities discount coupons worth rupees 2000 for winners discount coupons worth rupees 300 for all the participants gfg t-shirts for top 2 winners of hackathon tasket provides the following benefits lifetime upgrades for winners Five year free upgrades for everyone else. Give my certificate will provide verified certificates to all the team members. JetBrains will provide free access to the JetBrains students support program and JetBrains IDs. Without any further ado, let us now gear up and welcome our top six teams to pitch the solutions for the final judging of the event. 
all the teams please note that they'll be getting 10 minutes of this solution followed by 5 minutes of question answer sessions by the judges till the first teams join the session let's watch video of vsit hackathon 22 theme review We are waiting for the teams to join. They'll join the meet shortly.
the teams have joined will start with the pitching round i request team coding thumbs to share the screen and pitch the solution You have to present this thing. Is the screen visible? Yes, the screen is visible. So, good morning everyone. Our team Coding Thumbs has developed a project based on CRM for business. So, let's look into it. Our problem statement was to build a web application that can provide contact management businesses, provides analytics of reports and sales, automate the work, as well as email integration. So, do we provide? So, what do we provide? What are our features? We provide minimalist and user-friendly interface. With a CRM system, every question, every service request, every preference, and every past contact detail about every customer is instantly available. It also ensures that the customer's accounts won't be missed. It also enhances the data transparency, that is, the assurance that data being reported are accurate and are coming from the official source. So now, my fellow friend, Prathamesh Thakre will explain the further part. Mute, mute. Okay, so I will just talk about the like the updates we have made in our system. Can you hear? Okay, uh, so the first one that is we are going to have in a system that is the record service issue. So if there is any issue is uh, like is project regarding that the business then like uh if like there is less availability of employees or products so like you can just contact them immediately using a software second one is the defining users identity you also have multiple ways to identify the user that is well, uh that is well that is uh well get the users uh email that is by getting the users email then the phone number then the address from which we can contact them the third one goes to the assembling various customers it's like we're just gonna add multiple uh users with different preferences in one set from where the admin can choose which availability he needs. The fourth point which we have added in our list that is the pro, uh, that is we're gonna provide the printouts of the analytical research which we wanna do in our project. So it is just going to like we uh, we are just going to present a dot plot in a system in the following project which can detect the number of users using the uh, and like uh, and the number of people who are visiting our sites and like uh, like the number of registrations we are getting. So now let's move on to our uh, to Deepan Shubhatak. No okay. Uh, for this project, we are using PHP 5.6 and 7. For the database, we have been using SQL, and for the UI, we are using uh, we are going with HTML, CSS, AJAX, jQuery, and JavaScript. So we are using HTML for creating tabs and hyperlink to connect those tabs, and AJAX to update the web page uh, uh, asynchronously. Uh, uh, jQuery is a JavaScript uh, library. Uh, it is we basically use that to make the code fast and easier and lightweight. Uh, we also use JavaScript to make the page interactive. Uh, we have been using uh, web browsers like Mozilla Firefox, Google Chrome, uh, and many others. Uh, others. 
the further part will be explained by my okay, colleague. Okay, so. So let's start uh, feature scope. The feature of CRM is bright. In the CRM software, offers an, a number of advantages that it might go beyond your imagination. So uh, let's uh, have an eye on them. Uh, in your sales management, uh, integration of CRM software with according a uh, software uh, can be a big uh, game changer for a small enterprises. Uh, leads management uh, is other essential uh, part of every business industry, and uh, customer. and the uh, customer interaction task management contact management and the social media management crm plays important role and uh, generally uh, the three main types of crm software uh, there are uh, operational analytical and the collaborative thank you for listening to our presentation now let's move on to the demonstration part Okay. Okay. So is the screen visible? Okay. So this is our project. This is our interface which we have built up. So for the user sign up, we just have to go from here. And uh, if we want to just add a new user, so like then his name, then his email ID. Uh, actually, I already built this. So this is the registration part from where we have to just submit and we'll just get the login part. So I'll directly go in the login part where I have already created my website. This is the email. So this is the registration of the uh, user who is going to use the app. So the things we can do is the contact management. Firstly, the contact management is very important in the in both the users. That is, that is of the admin and of the user. So the another interface is for the admin. This is the admin use uh, interface, and this one is for the registration part. Ad Ad admin, we are already logged in, and we are just we are just going to show it later. So request a queue. You can just request a queue by using this thing. The name we are already added in the list while doing the registration. The email is also added. The contact list is also added. And the service required. So, like, we we can just write the company or something where we have. If I have worked with vowels, so like, uh, I am like, if I am expert in logo design, so I can just type in your query. Like, I am I am an expert in logo design, and I can just send it to the admin. Like, who needs who needs such people? So this is for the code. After submitting this code, we are just going to be in the admin part, and like, we will just the admin will get the code. Like managing codes. Imagine I have just submitted. I have already did it in the demo part. So the service required. Yep. So from here, you can just take any actions if you needed some. Like this, this is a sort of uh, info about the user if he needs him. So like uh, this is the name, the email, the contact number, and the company where he has previously worked, and the requ required services. That is the website development and uh, that we have uh, previously selected, and the description that the user is interested. So like if there is some uh, less products or like some less productivity in a company, like uh, there is some less peoples. Like for working for the logo design, so like we can just invite him and we can just remark, we can just add some remarks and we can also update the remarks for them. This is this is a part of the code. We can also add a ticket for it. We can also create a ticket. So from here we can just add the subject like uh, in logo designing. So like we can just add the type which type we need it. This is a uh, whether it is a billing or something. Then we can choose a priority. If we uh, if if we have to join faster, like if it is urgent, if it is very important, like we have some questions. So like we can just add it here and we can just uh, add a description. Okay, like I am just. I just want to join it quicker or something, and we can just click the send button, and uh, in the admin part we will get the everything of that user. So in the dashboard, the admin will get uh, about the things uh, like the number of tickets and uh, everything. Yeah, this manage. So like the tickets for a logo designer. So like from here, uh, admin can just message him. So like if he can invite us or not. So like like that, he can just also update it if he doesn't need some users like this. So the later part is like of the uh, analytical part, which we have done in the dashboard for the admin. So like he must get to know, okay, like number of users who are just uh, using his app, who are just using this web app for him. Uh, so like uh, this is an flow, like this is an uh, graph, analytical analytical graph, from where we can just get in an overlook of the uh, like number of users joining this. So from here we can also print it. uh print chart so that the user can get an quick overview if in a piece of paper if we want to see or if he wants to mark some important things from which months or some which months are like going on 
you can just also uh, convert it in PDF for such stuff. Or we have also added some features ke, like if uh, he he wants in some other format, so like he can just uh, download the PNG one, JPG one, PDF, and the SVG one. This is for the analytical part of the user. Yeah. So later, like accessing the user admin will also get the uh, like the number of people who uh, registered before. He will get the each and every info of, the, of this user. He will get his name. He will get his email, the date he has logged in. So like and the MAC ID and his city and his country. Okay. So like uh, these things will also be uh, get by the admin. So from here we can the admin can also give the actions like he can just. Uh, give his uh, response to the uh, user if the res uh, if he has already respond so from the dashboard he will get the message like the contact management which you needed from this side in the logo design so you can just see this is a registration part like of the user from where he can just get a message but he can't edit because it is sent by the admin so this is the update which he can get and like other things we can just do it here so there is a dashboard like we can just uh, get everything about it uh, the tickets, then the goods that we got, then the profile and the ticket. That's all from my side. Team, is the presentation done? Yeah, yeah, we are done. Okay, so moderator, uh, can we go ahead with our questions? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Chetan, you want to start or? No, you could go ahead. I can ask later, please. Thank you. Yeah, okay. Uh, so uh, there were many problem statements, team, uh, coding thumbs, which uh, were given. Can you, uh, because, uh, I was not able to correlate all the things. So could you simplify and tell me what is the single most problem out of this multiple problem statements which were given to you? You're trying to solve in this. Okay, so I would like to explain it. So like uh, there is a business, like uh, it was a business statement. It was a CRM about business. So like uh, if there is like uh, if the admin, admin means the, uh, like the admin who just needs some products or something from the user like he just needs some logo designers or something so like he can just use this app and he can just uh, get them from there he can just contact with them he can also email them or he can just get their uh, like he can just ask them for their company or something for that stuff is it kind of some word some uh, portal where i maybe uh, uh private or freelancers having some skills and who can register there and get some work is that what you're trying to say oh uh, yeah 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 it's like that like a user who is who isn't having anything like who's having some experience so like he can just register it and he can just uh, put it in the section like in the uh, registration part which we have put in there uh and so the admin can get a notification so like th there is a guy who needs to join for your company he has such such requirements he has such specifications and like that the things for your business things and all okay Fine. And then uh, how does the work assign get assigned to you? How do you collect the dates and then map to respective requirements or a uh, source of, like of about, freelancers we have? Uh, like it's about the, like if you want to just, uh, like, um, can, can you repeat the question please? Actually. See, for example, for web designing, somebody just contacted you. You filled up that I have this skill set and that is there in your contact management. Okay. okay. Now, uh, to assign it to somebody, there should be some lead, right? Which comes to you. Uh, some sort of lead. Yeah, lead means... notice... yeah. So how, how is that? Because I could not see that anywhere in your presentation, how an end user would put forward his requirements uh, then there was somebody assigned that from the resource pool you can select the best match and assign that uh, actually there was a section where we have put like to chat like he can just ask the admin or something to just uh, ask about the these things and all okay. like about he uh, just want to recruit for the business or like uh, that things okay fine uh, so can you uh, 
tell me something about security which you have implemented in your application uh, actually currently there is no encryption or security we have used for this one but like it is only like the password one we have uh, for the user login and the password we have just uh, that things up there for security one we haven't just implied any encryptions or something we just have a simple ui and we have just done it linearly so that a user can find it an e easier interface to interact with the uh, business person like uh, with the admin yeah so, but how do you know the person uh, la sorry last question uh, so because how do you then validate a person for example i as an rf say that i am a graphics designer how do you validate okay. RF is RF only? uh like Imagine if he, uh, you are a graphic designer, you just have to take it, uh, take it the option like I am a graphic designer and you can just write it below. Okay, like I have such, such experience and you can just also uh, send your link of the documents or something from where like you just have uh, multiple experiences from where uh, you got it or something. So the admin can just interrogate with you and just uh, he can just ask you some questions about it. Uh, so like uh, it's like it's up to him like if he wants to take you or not uh, according to his uh, availability. Yeah. Yeah, fine. Other judges, please get in. I'm done with the questions. Mm -hmm. So I, I just have one question. Can you uh, define what will be the uh, user success from a CRM point of view? I mean, what are the key benefit it will drive out of your application in okay. terms of so customer today, relationship management? OK, so today, as you can see, multiple users are like using only phones at all the for all the purposes. So like this is a link from where just uh, just some people who aren't getting some jobs like they can just contact with these people, big people who has their business going on. So they can just uh, contact with them. They can just get a list of total number of people who had this skill set. Skill set. So that uh, if there is there are uh, there are like there is some like there are minimum users uh, in his company in his business. So he can just uh, start recruiting from this uh, from this site and he can just get an overview of these people. And he can then just start recruiting them and he can just interrogate them. Also, he can get his, uh, like the people, uh, qualification and such things. He can also get it from there. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I mean, the, I mean, the recruitment is just one part, right? I mean, this is not related to customer as such, but I, I, yeah. I got, I mean, I understood that part, but, uh, okay. if you can elaborate a bit more and, uh, so. we, we know that multiple users, like, uh, there are a lot of people up here who are like, who aren't getting some jobs in some things. So if the, if also like people have multiple skills, they have just, they have done multiple courses and something, but like they don't even get jobs because like because of some things like uh, interviews or something like others they can add so that they can just implement in a project like they can add their qualifications, they can add multiple qualifications which they have got and the business like the admin one who is the businessman or uh, he has a business and he can just uh, if he is just resting or something he is somewhere like having his free time he can just log in, in our website and he can just check his qualifications he can actually he can just. It's easy to use, like he can just use it in any of his free time. Like while for recruiting and such purpose. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I'm, I'm uh, done with my question. Hi team Boston here. So uh, a question for the team. So CRM is something, there are a lot of vendors in the market with respect to CRM and CRM is kind of a solved solution. Something what vendors or maybe clients look for is what kind of cloud services you offer with respect to CRM. Where do you host data, right? For tomorrow, if Monster comes and tell you or LinkedIn comes and tell you that, I mean, we like your UI, but we do not want to use your backend system. So how flexible are you guys? I mean, is, it, is your system flexible enough to switch between the cloud services? And also, I will add my. Uh, I, mean, I will just add two to three questions, and then you can form your answers accordingly. Okay. And next, similarly, there are a lot of uh, vendors in the market. What is the USB of your product that distinguishes from other market players? And what are the USBs? Okay. Now, also, I looked at the UI, and is there an option to globally search for an option? Like there are a few nested uh, options available within the sub menus. I do not know where exactly that menu lies, but I want to globally search from the uh, dashboard itself. Is that possible? 
uh, like from dashboard you want to search what can you just repeat for example there is a sub menu somewhere under uh, a nested menu inside your ui i really do okay. not know where to go or oh, the admin doesn't know where to go inside and check for the race okay, tickets i can, I can like I'll show you i can i can show you like from where he has to search the multiple because you know, the you know about the ui you right. know it but the admin yeah, doesn't it's, know it's he's actually, coming to the ui for the first time okay okay so the ui is particular hey, you can you can go at the questions yeah you can go at the questions uh, one by one i mean starting from the first question and then you can come to this one okay. and other team members can also pitch in स्पेसिफिक प्रोजेक्ट Yes, yes, I, I can hear you. Yeah, please go ahead. Uh, can you just repeat the question? I wasn't able to hear. Uh, you are barely audible. Actually, the last question which I heard about it was like about the search yeah. option. So, like, if 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 a, right. if, a, if the admin wants to search, like, uh, there are multiple users who will be registering their names. and their skill sets so like we have just added an widget like of the screen uh, of the search bar so like from where he can just implement and like he can just get the users like which he wants to he can just type like the number of skill set he needs he can just type up there and he can just get the particular users from there and he can just see like he can also get their like if there are multiple users who are into logo designing so there are multiple users so like uh, from them so like one will be selected who who might be having the multiple certificates or something so like uh, Uh, if the person is having five to six certificates and one is having three to four, so like you know, like five to six one might be selected. So like that, the working will be worked and like for this thing, for the search bar thing, if like uh, if the use uh, admin wants to search them like that. Okay, fine. Uh, anyone else wants to ask question? Please go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Means like, can one of your please present? what can you repeat yeah uh, prathamesh would it be possible for you to pre the presentation the actual screen that uh, all that app again on the screen i i can't see presenting the app no actually we have just turned off the screen actually of the uh, you you want to see the app again web app yeah, yeah, yeah i just want then basis that i would be able to like sort of explain the Hello. I think your voice is coming quite low. It's coming in slow voice. Can you repeat? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not audible. Sorry, I can't hear you. Um. Can you hear me now? Hello. uh question yeah i can hear you the please. ui you you can open the ui again okay. uh, so okay. the judge can do just go through it and ask the question okay just a minute Hello, can you show me? Can you see me? Show me. Can you see me? We can. Thank you so much. Uh, am I audible? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. For presenting, I mean, like within thirty hours to get the being able to come to this extent, it's for doing that and for presenting. I I think like it's it's. 
where uh, that you'll have sort of big questions, right? Like in basically in following I just have asked so far. Uh, say for example, um, but uh, but because you need. You aren't able to. You aren't able to. by mistake one of our group member uh, was also uh, uh, has also left the group uh, 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 can you uh, get him in the he's in the lobby i guess uh, sorry but your teammate is not in the lobby can you ask him to rejoin So, is it better now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Your your voice is proper now. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. I mean, like, uh, if the candidates could please present the screen again. Hello. Actually, I thought that my voice was getting better. It was just coming slow. No, no, no worries. Like, uh, I think you're audible now. If you could please present your screen. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So this is so, the dashboard effect. Uh, this might be the wait. Just a minute. I will just start it from before. No, no, no. I, 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 I followed everything. Okay, I okay. just go to the dashboard. Okay. Uh, this yes. Is the dashboard I, of the registration part. Uh, right. So say for example, right? Like uh, you, you are the person who is using this dashboard, and then you enter okay. into the space. Uh, you have like say. Enter into. Now uh, enter into this pane, right? Like you are on this pane, you come in and you want to see okay. like, uh, imagine there are 20 tickets that have come in. For, for the admin part you are talking uh, about? Yes, yes, for the admin okay, part. Okay, so for, for admin has, part, this is the thing. Oh, awesome. Okay. Yeah, this this was the screen that I just yeah. wanted to understand. So you have okay, okay. around like, you know, say 20 uh, uh, tickets or basically inputs that have come in or codes that have come in. Okay. How do you link to that page directly from here? Okay. So, you, so you, the number of ticket. Uh -huh. Okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. So yeah. the number of okay. So the number of registrations which you are going to do actually uh like I have only done one registration. So like this thing you can just watch it here. On there is only one thing and there is the overall users are seven. So like if you want to see the total number of tickets from the app, we can just go in the manage ticket uh, that is in the left dialog box and from here we will get the multiple tickets of the each and everyone who is just registering. If you want, I can just show you a live, live demonstration, like uh, by adding a new user and just by creating no, his ticket. No, thank you, thank you. Uh, that's that's helpful. Okay, okay. Just, uh, this is sorry. I, okay, I, this is the thing from where? Yeah, yeah. This is the lo uh, logo designing one, and like the uh, we can just uh, the we have, I have just added it in the demo part. Yeah, as an I, expert plus having multiple experiences, I would like to join. Yeah. So like from here, the okay. admin okay. can just update. Yeah. No, thank you. I, I know the flow, like you walked us through the flow earlier in the call and okay. I was able to follow it. That was super helpful. Thank you. Uh, what okay. I'm trying to point out is like, say once we are as a user, right, as an admin user, okay. if you have like 100 yeah. tickets coming in on a particular mm -hmm. day, uh, like, okay, and you want to filter for something specific from the dashboard, okay. are you able to filter something specific? Like say uh, tomorrow you are running the company, yeah. you have like 100 people who have put in a request for something. Uh, how okay. do you go from the dashboard directly into the uh, pane where you'll be able to understand how many users have come in who are giving like a request for say plumbing? Okay. Okay, so I will just come out to you. The starting part uh, you want is uh, from the dashboard, right? For like how the admin will get to know yes. so like the number of users yeah the number of users will we will be getting here so like the number of tickets if he wants to he will just get the number of user of and the chart analytical chart we have made in the dashboard part dashboard part will be just given uh overview of the number of users who have registered 
uh, who has visited and who, uh, who has just cured uh, like the request he has sent and the overall tickets. This is the ticket section. This yeah. is the request section. Yeah. And from here, we will just get the uh, analytical part. And you are saying about the 100 tickets, right? Yeah. If someone has just registered for 100 tickets. So from the left side management, uh, manage ticket, we will get uh, here will be 100 number of tickets, right? Got it. Got it. No means. Yeah. Means. yeah. So, yeah. So from here, we will get 100 uh, dialog boxes. So like from there, the admin can find it very easy to find. That is, as it is an easy interface from here. We can just click and we can get the overall view. Uh, we are only showing the logo descending because this is, that is the thing which uh, the admin will be need. Got it. For Got that it. thing, like whether he's an UI UX developer, whether he's an uh, animation developer, like that, that, that stuff. Yeah. Got it. No, makes sense. Thank you. Thank you. That's that's okay. pretty much from my end. I'll pass it over to the other judges. Okay. Uh, I have one simple quick question. And first of all, you know, Congratulations. I mean, it was a 30 hours thing. You guys have definitely built something yeah. really good. Thanks for that. Uh, appreciate uh, it. Thank you. Uh, if you can just go back to the UI, uh, the dashboard UI, okay. uh, where you, you, you have a, you have shown to the ticket around the logo, right? If you can just go back to that UI part once, I just have a quick UI okay. question over there. Okay. From this one, the admin one or the registration one? Uh, from the admin one. Okay. This is the dashboard one? Yeah. The uh, screen is not visible yet. It isn't visible. I have just shared it. I think yeah, it, it just came up. Right. <clears throat> so if you go to okay, the okay. ticket, if you uh, go to Manage the ticket, ticket one? Yes. Okay. Interestingly, you have put a, uh, you know, search bar at the end of the ticket. Uh, I mean, any specific reason around that? On the your search bar? Yeah. Okay. Actually, we have just made it to make it interactive. Actually, we have just, if we click at it, we will just uh, get the whole one. And if we click on close, it will be close. It is actually interactive. We have just, I mean, uh, we have just so made it. Right. It doesn't make any sense. Like it isn't, uh, it, it isn't like, uh, it isn't for you. So like it isn't a real search bar. We have just. Uh, added an emoji like type of emoji right uh yeah definitely. Uh, if you want to see the search bar we have just added in quotes the maximum quiz we will get we, we can search from you actually quotes might be great uh like it will be more useful because it has contains emails then the uh, contact numbers then the services uh required and the actions we can make it from you actually manage ticket tickets might it, it it also might be more useful but like and, i think uh, quiz may be more have you already made a filter around you know which are the open tickets and closed tickets have you already uh, made like that filter? Which, which type of if, filters? Like, uh, like the, the open number tickets of like, closed tickets? Uh, yeah. Open tickets and no. Uh, actually, I, I wanted to implement it. Like, I want to implement it in, in three ways. One was the open ticket, one was the closed uh, close ticket, and one was the working progress. Correct. So, like, we are just going to keep it in future work. So, like, course, uh, so I understand. I understand. From, yeah. from here, we can, if, if the user has read this one, so, like, it will come as open. If, if he has just typed and he has just kept it and like he is just thinking for it, it will come in the ongoing purpose. And if he has sent it and he has already used it, so it will go in the closed section. So sure. this is already used and so it is in the closed section as you can see. Sure. That answers my question. Yeah. Thank you so much. All the okay. best, guys. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, can I ask one last question? Uh, it's it's hello. Hello, yeah. Uh, this one of the criteria was about email integration, right? So, just uh, have you thought about it? And have you? I mean, I'm sure it's quite a long hackathon you've gone. So, really great work. But uh, and even if you haven't implemented uh, the email integration, have you thought about uh, building? Uh, in some way by using some cloud technology or have you built it? Can you just explain if you were to do that, how, how, how would you go about? So it, it just kind of, kind of gives your thought process understanding about uh, if any new feature you want to add. How, uh, we were thinking about uh, that part uh, and we also tried, but uh, we, uh, we were we uh, weren't able to do that uh, that's fine that's been, fine but uh, but if you were to just do what would you do from oh, yeah, system uh, design I mean, point of view uh, uh, what I would you do and how mm -hmm. 
Excuse me, sorry for the inconvenience, but like, can you just repeat the question? Actually, uh, while I'm cutting the present screen, I'm just leaving the studio by mistake. It was the second time. Sorry for that. Can you just repeat the question for me, sir? Please. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the question was around uh, if you have done the email in integration, and even if not, it's fine. But what's your thought process around from About system? Email, yeah, 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 yeah. It, it, it is also in the future work. But like, we like, we, we would like to implement the email system. Because it is quite easier, like uh, by getting the email, we are we are just firstly we are getting the email of the user, right? We are getting his phone number, we are also getting his email. So from his email also we can just get a direct message, like from our own UI, like from our own web app, he can just get a message in his uh, Gmail that he has been like selected for the interview or like for the business or something. Yeah. So from system design point of view, how would you go about it if you were to implement that notification system? Would you use okay, something? Email. Yeah, email or yeah, I, I will, mean, it could be any notification system, right? It could be yeah, by email. Will, we as just, yeah, we can just uh, actually, uh, if there are multiple, like for the each and every, what's that? Uh, for each and every that thing, uh, article, like the which we have, which we have put up there. Uh, just a minute. Yeah, for each and every ticket, the ticket which we have put up there. So like the, uh, after, after giving the ticket to the user, just submit, I will just share. Yeah, my it's, it's about more about, could you use any tools oh, okay. of the, so, of, so of I, the shelf tools, like yeah, SNS in, in, system in from it. Actually in the admit part, we have that manage ticket, right? So like from there, we can just give a dialog box at the right, uh, between the closed and the search bar. And from there, he can just directly interact with the Gmail. So from the Gmail, he can just, the, uh, admin can just text him or like he can just Give an overview, give his uh, capability, like if he can join or like something that, that reasons he can just give from the Gmail part. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Fine. Fine. Yeah. Yeah. Any more Thank questions? You. No, that's it. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Are we done or something? Okay. Thank you everyone for your suggestions and something. So like we will just start implementing it in our future works and all the things. Thank you everyone. Thank you for your suggestions. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Great. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you. Great work. Great work. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you team. Thank you judges. Before moving forward, we have a clip of our event sponsor, Dear Digital. Is your company facing some marketing issues? Don't worry, we have an excellent solution. Dear Digital. Dear Digital is a leading digital marketing and development agency for top e-commerce brands in Europe. Although the company's headquarters is in Belgium, people work remotely from around the world. Dear Digital is looking to expand its presence in Indian e-commerce sector and wants to train, test and hire motivated students who will help them to write their success stories for the Indian market. The team has one goal, help you scale your brand sustainably as far as they can and beyond. Dear Digital hires top talents based on their performance in their internships and the new internship batch starts from October 20th. Interested in joining? Go visit the website or scan the QR code provided on the screen. We are extremely delighted to announce Dear Digital as our title sponsor for the event. I request team encryptors to share their screen and pitch their solution. So good evening, judges. Am I audible? Good evening. Yeah. Hello. Yeah. Hi. Good evening. We can hear you. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. Okay. So I'll I'll ask my teammate to share his screen. Joel, can you just share your screen, please? Yeah. Is my screen visible? Yeah. 
पाथ इज इट विजिबल यस इट्स विजिबल यस इट इज यस ओके थैंक यू गुड इवनिंग एवरीवन वी आर क्रिट टीम इंक्रिप्टर्स एंड आवर प्रॉब्लम स्टूडेंट इज बस ट्रैकिंग सिस्टम यूजिंग मोबाइल डेवलपमेंट आवर टीम मेंबर्स आर पार्थ बाराई परवत सिंह राज पुरोहित रुजुअल एंथनी एंड माई सेल्फ जुअल देवासिया सो अबाउट द सोल्यूशन सो वी आर वी आर डेवलपिंग अ जी पी एस ट्रैकिंग एप्लीकेशन दैट इज बेसिकली अलाउ द बसेस टू बी ट्रैक मोर एक्यूरेटली एंड एफिशियंटली दैन करंट बसिंग बस ट्रैकिंग सिस्टम दैट इज वी आर डेवलप डेवलप एन एप वर द यूजर्स कैन ईजिली ओपन द एप एंड see the schedules and the uh, schedules and routes of uh, various buses so here are some of the uh, salient features uh, it provides a smooth and ui uh, smooth ui for better user experience uh, it helps to uh, provide accurate locations and schedules to save the time of the user it also provides a hassle free booking system and we have also integrated a payment gateway for booking tickets okay uh, so uh, the data flow diagram uh, this is the data flow diagram for our application so we have a uh, otp based login authentication system which request uh, which also requests the location per uh, permission which is used to uh, like uh, uh, display the user the nearest uh, the nearest bus stations and the nearest buses available uh, we are sending all this data to a back end api and uh, the api process the input and the give uh, gives the nearest bus stops and buses uh, that are running on that particular route uh, we have uh, tested the back end also and we are providing features like online ticket booking, uh, booking for the interstate as well as interstate cities uh, we were also planning to generate the uh, qr codes for easier ticket verification but uh, since that uh, since time driven allow us uh, so we were not able to implement that and the next two phases we are basically rolling out the application for user feedback and working on the feedbacks and reviews from the users okay so the technologies used by us are uh, flutter node js and mongodb we choose uh, we choose uh, this uh, tech stack because uh, since flutter is a uh, cross platform library uh, which can work framework that is used to uh, that can be used to develop android as well as ios application Uh, on the other side node js is a fast uh, runtime environment and mongodb is like it has a uh, better query performance and uh, rapid uh, development so that's why we choose this uh, technology stack uh, so yes using our app the uh, we can uh, target the majority of the market as uh, many of the people uh, in, in in mumbai as well as in maharashtra tend to travel through buses and roughly uh, 70 billion people per day uh, travel through buses and uh, in year 2021 around 1.3 million passengers rode buses in mumbai daily uh, and the target market is expected to increase exponentially uh, because of the uh, latest uh, launch of new ev buses next slide please uh, so in using our app we can uh, we can select the uh, uh, seats of our choice and we can book the selected seats uh, this is our seat map next slide so advantages of using public transport as a public transport is always convenient uh, even at uh, inconvenient times like during night hours also it, it is also very uh, affordable as private transport because uh, uh, the cheapest uh, cheapest bus ticket is uh, prices of uh, like 5 rupees Uh, and it provides reliable efficient and affordable passenger uh, friendly uh, mobility so good evening just once again so as we studied our competitors we found these competitors direct competitors i just name them chalo application m indicator redbus.in uh, redbus.in these are the very famous applications many of you all would have heard these applications about them next now you all will think what are the competitive advantages over this applications so basically the first and foremost in, uh, advantage is that our application is as is for both local as well as interstate whereas the above applications are mostly for only one service like chalo is for local whereas other two are for booking interstate buses second giving the highest priority to provide an optimized solution after studying competition 
like we went through the application there are few here and there faults which we have or we have and will are planning to overcome in our application third providing better communication between admin and user after the booking in and in case of cancellation and refunds so these are the future plans as you all know the hackathon was only for 30 hours many of the features we thought about were not able to implement so here are here are some of them first one is to provide better data in privacy and security like right now we are just taking the data from the user using gps and all so we can see that data so we were thinking of doing something like that although we have not researched on it yet uh, to hide that data so we can't also see the data so it will hide the privacy of the user second to provide easy information about nearby service centers in case of a breakdown like if a bus is traveling from mumbai to delhi if there is a sudden breakdown on a particular point so it is very difficult to find the nearby centers right so we will we are thinking of providing a feature on our application where you can just pro provide the coordinates and you can directly find the service centers nearby third generating scannable qr code to enable easier ticket verification so when a person books a ticket we are also thinking to providing him a qr code which he can provide at the time of boarding which can help him scan the ticket very easily and efficiently thank you so now i'd like my partner parvat to show the for you front end ui of the application So is the screen visible? Yes, yes. Uh, so uh, this is the. So first, I will uh, enter the mobile number. Could you uh, please share the OTP? Yes, sure. Two nine double three double three three seven three seven. Okay. Uh, so here the user location is detected, and we are sending all this to the backend server for further processing. So as you can see, these are the nearest. Uh, Look, uh, bus stops that are near me. Now uh, we can also select uh, bus stops from here. For example, if I am trying to uh, go from Gorai, so basically I can search, and we have also integrated like uh, Google Search API, uh, Places API, for getting these uh, auto suggestions about this. Okay, so uh, there is uh, one particular bus is available, so we can view that uh, particular path in the Google Maps. From the point we are boarding to the end point that the bus is going to reach, so this is the inter uh, interstate uh, intercity transport, and uh, we have this section also. From here we can book for uh, like multiple cities. For example, if I am entering Mumbai, So basically, as you can see, uh, already once uh, slot is booked, that is marked red. Now we can click on the booked uh, ticket button, and uh, this will take us to the reserve pay payments gateway. From uh, here, we can do the payments. 
uh, currently it is running in uh, the testing mode so we don't require any credentials for doing this So like this, uh, we can uh, book the uh, like book all the tickets that we. So this is the entire workflow of the application. So now, as my team member has shown you the front end of the application, I'll just share my screen and present you the back end of the application. So basically, this is this is the backend ka full API. So first of all, I have made a VCT backend folder, which contains of multiple folders like authentication, middleware. So this is the basic file structure. So first of all, I'll show you the schema of user. So when a user registers on the application, I take these of these following details: phone number, user number, device ID, user ID, longitude as well as latitude. So in case if a person doesn't allow his permission, so we are hard we are providing a default longitude and latitude. So and apart from that, for we are also providing an admin server. So in admin server, I'm just taking two fields: phone number of the user, uh, admin as well as admin name. Then this is the booking schema where the booking is done. So first of all, phone number which is unique itself in the whole database. So bus number in which the booking is done, source from which the bus is going, destination where the bus is, bus is reaching, depart uh, departure date. Payment ID and signature ID, which is received from Razorpay after successful payment, and booking booking seat seat number. And these are the routes. As you saw, we got a bus named uh, bus from Mumbai to Nashik when my when my colleague showed you. So these are the this is the API for the, for those buses. So it be, it's basically bus number, travels name, source destination, source coordinates, latitude longitudes, destination coordinates, and stops coordinates. Where the bus stops in between. After that, amount of the ticket, departure date, and book seat term. So this is done. So these are the routes. So basically, as you saw, we are using mobile OTP login, authentication login. So we are also using a JWT token from backend side. So when a person registers, I make a document of it and I call this function, which is authentication function. It provides a JWT token in which the user's details are signed and it is sent to the front end. So when the when the front end tries to log in the data, log in the user again, he just sends me the token and I verify it using this function. So it is basically used as middleware. So in this auto login function, this user routes auto login function, I'll show you that it is used as a middleware. And following are the functions which are used for booking a seat as well as cre creating order ID for the razor pay. Sorry, and finding to the buses. You, but you just have two minutes left for your presentation. Okay, 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 okay. So basically, these are the data flow of our application, sir. Great job, guys. I mean, kudos for using Flutter since none of the other teams have used a cross platform tech, and you guys use Flutter. I mean, amazing. Uh, so, I will start off with the questions. So, one of the team members should write down the questions so that I mean, I will ask the questions together, and then you can frame the answers and come back on it one by one. Thank you. Yeah. So, the first, uh, I was looking at the flow diagram. So flow diagram is asking first login. So why do we even need a login for such a system? I mean, at least you guys should allow the user to get inside and check the current running status or the availability of the buses. And then when he's about to book at that point of time, maybe you can ask the user to log in. Okay. And then the second question is the location permission. Uh, I never saw the location prompt being asked anywhere. I mean, directly it was, uh, been pinpointed to a specific lat and long. Okay. So what if the user doesn't grant a location permission and he is somewhere within the flow? Okay, he logged in. He provided permission for the first time. Okay, then he killed the app. Now he's already logged in. You are inside the app. Now for some reason the location permission has been revoked by the operating system. Okay. And now all the flow will break. So how will you handle this use case? Okay. And uh, does the app provide any real-time tracking of the bus or the user once? Okay. 
ठीक है एंड हाउ विल यू हैंडल कॉन्क्रेंसी बिकॉज इन सच ए रियल टाइम सिस्टम कॉन्क्रेंसी इज द मोस्ट ट्रिकेस्ट पार्ट टू हैंडल फॉर एग्जाम्पल यू सिलेक्टेड वन सीट एंड देर आर अदर यूजर्स वेटिंग फॉर टू गेट होल्ड ऑन टू दैट स्पेसिफिक स्पॉट आई मीन हाउ लॉन्ग विल यू लेट द यूजर टू होल्ड ऑन टू द स्पेसिफिक सीट because i mean there's a potential customer who is willing to make a payment quickly and get boarded to the bus okay so how will you handle congress concurrency not just respect to seat also but also if you are polling uh, gps coordinates from the bus your backend system will be flooded with this gps polling and at some point of time your the system will break so how will you efficiently handle the polling of the gps coordinates it, whether it can be from the bus to track the bus location or it can also be from the user uh, front end app also okay uh also i mean one important feature that i feel missing is the current running status of the bus we only saw that the current bus is available from between this route okay so one there should be some usb about the app i mean we differentiate from the other uh, competitors in the market um, yes i think these are the questions one thing that i would like to appreciate is i mean you guys uh, are almost there with the uh, production ready code few tweaks and here there i mean amazing job on that okay so now you can just come back to these questions and answer one by one what you guys think about it okay yes sir so basically the first three questions are based on the ui side of the application so so i'll ask parvat to share the answers for them and i'll take on from that okay uh, so uh, regarding that lo location actually uh, i am running this matlab uh, i have always uh, like already granted the permission for accessing the location so that's why the prompt didn't come but uh, in case if user don't want to give the permission for the location then he uh, there is a skip button he can just uh, skip to the next ui and if like he is accessing something that requires the location permission then basically every time before accessing the location i am like uh, giving user the prompt to like allow the application for the location uh, services okay so this flow was missing in the flow diagram then you guys need to correct the flow diagram in that case okay yeah continue uh, okay uh, and uh, regarding that uh, seat booking uh, like uh, regarding the ui like uh, multiple users can book the seat so for that we uh, we are basically like uh, we are not uh, basically like we are making the user do the payment like on the spot he else the he can't like like uh, book the seat and then just pay later basically so he just have to pay on that time and then only his uh, slot will be confirmed it's something like that so i uh, i don't think the buffer time may be really very less it will be very less unless and until the user is like booking the confirming the payment the seat won't be allotted to him it's uh, like that so have you guys and, uh, acquired any lock on the specific seat while making the booking or what if someone else also books the same seat or maybe two people can book the same seat this can happen right yes yes uh, actually this can happen uh, but currently we have actually uh, not handled uh, that case or maybe okay fine fine about... yeah please continue yes okay and uh, that uh, why the user needs to log in is uh, because actually we wanted to like uh, made the app a little like secured and we didn't want to disturb the flow of the application so, so that's why we integrated the login system at the start only and didn't allow the users to like uh, come in the application so that's why but uh, i think uh, we should provide the uh, the skip option also if the user wants to like uh, see the application from the inside that how the ui is and uh, how the application works basically right so i mean if i get into the app and i can get hold on to the jw token i can just go to any online utility and just decode the jw token get the all the entire details so do you think jw token is the secure way of dealing this yeah go ahead for parth so sir as you said that about jwt token right so i had also planned on using refresh token so if you want i can share my screen again i have written the code for the same so once the jwt token expires at the time of registration a refresh code is also provided to the front end if the jwt mm -hmm. token is expired at the time of login the function will be fired of 
creating a new JWT token. And we'll plan the expiry of JWT token for a day or something like that. But as time didn't permit, we weren't able to integrate it, the, it with the front end. So one use case here, uh, just imagine you implemented the refresh token logic and while Correct. doing a refresh, you accidentally logged out the user. Now you will just provide a bad experience and also need to handle, make sure that the user not get logged out and also at the same time, make sure that the experience is flawless having refreshed the token. Anything you want to uh, share on this specific use case? So, sir, as you said, uh, it is correct, right? That test case, we weren't able to sort it out right now because the time was very difficult to manage everything. So, we first of all, our main aim was to complete as much as the part of our application we could complete and provide a little bit security. I will not say it is very secure. It is a bit mm -hmm. secure as we provide JWT token from back inside. So we can, if we would have given more, we would have got more time. We would have done th thought on things like that. As so that's said, fun. I mean, at like, least you thought about the security part and you implemented the JWT yes. token that really is appreciative. Amazing. Yes, sir. And one last question. I mean, if someone can answer about the concurrency part, how will you handle if the client keeps on pulling GPS coordinates, the system will be flooded. How will you handle that now? So basically, sir, as you imagine said, imagine hundreds of customers, thing. just imagine hundreds of customers standing at the bus depot waiting for the bus or maybe trying to make a booking online and everyone mm -hmm. is pulling their location. And the location polling is like, I mean, within milliseconds, multiple GPS coordinates going. So it like, I mean, it can be millions of requests coming in at the server side. So how will you handle this? So, sir, for uh, getting the location of the person and the nearby bus stops, as my colleague showed you, we are using directions API as well as place API, which is provided by Google. Mm -hmm. So basically, as much as we tested the data, we were getting the data as fast as possible. So we weren't able to test it with multiple users, like you said, hundreds of people. In case of such something like that, we can think of providing something like a particular requests at a particular time. Yeah, so to counter this one catch, since you mentioned that you will be using directions API and places API. So even this API is required GPS, right? Without the GPS, this APIs won't work. And this APIs yes. also have rate limiting from Google. If you frequently use these APIs, I mean, you will be get getting billed by the Google for using these APIs. So you have to be very careful making the APIs very efficient. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah. So that's it from my side. I mean, other judges can ask questions. Hi, if you turn one, I'll go next. Uh... I think, uh, first of all, congratulations. I think it's quite uh, extensive work you have shown and built in short time, especially around cross-platform tool and the server-side implementation. Uh, I think quite a lot of was covered by Boston gen gentlemen previously, but I'll just ask one thing about your notification system, the OTP and various other notification system that what are the uh, tools and system you have used? I mean, have you thought of using something available off the shelf from the cloud uh, providers or have you built your own bespoke system? Uh, Parvat, you might go ahead. Okay, uh, so uh, for the notification, actually we were uh, planning. We were planning to use the platform uh, one signal. Uh, it is a platform that we can basically use to uh, send notifications to the re uh, remote devices by uh, taking their IDs, basically hmm. device IDs. From the uh, those device IDs, we can uh, send notification to a particular user, or to uh, or we can also pro broadcast the notification to all the users uh, according to the categories like that. That's good. And have you managed to integrate that or you just planned about it? Okay, part you So, sir, just to add on that, uh, as you said, uh, for OTP login, first of all, when the user registers, we are using Firebase. So, the OTP is provided by Firebase for that purposes. And for, as you said, for providing notifications, right? So, we thought of using one signal. 
again the same thing happened back end code is ready i have implemented the code but as you can as you can understand front end is very extensive extensive so it was difficult to integrate in the limited time but from back end side everything is ready like device id user id is collected at the time of login and at the time of booking we can provide an uh, notification everything okay no that's good that, that's understandable and just one one question around monetization and its usefulness and also benefit from your side or as a system provider i mean especially around the searches for the best time right like that is not the area where uh, this uh, app provider will make any money uh, but it's a very important utility and functionality you want to provide to user uh, but how do you mo monetize that capability have you thought about it that where hundreds and millions of user are just searching for the nearby bus uh, that time your resources and sees and system and uh, your in, in infrastructure is being used uh, but how do you uh, monetize that part so that you take over some cost of it i mean have you thought anything around that so sir are you asking overall monetization or just related to search api um yeah i'm just probably just taking one part because i, I guess uh, booking ticket there is a, a, a scope of uh, uh, some sort of uh, margin and monetization so i'm not probably leaving that part so i'm just kind of, kind of focusing one particular area of your application whereby uh, people are searching could you mo monetize that or have you thought about it so basically as you said search api should be monetized we did think on it but the thing here is if we start something if we start with something like that at the start only people will people won't come on the system itself if they come they find we are pricing them for searches they won't come only because they have a different competitors we have competitors right red bus is there they'll go there just find the data and all so we didn't we did think but we aren't able to find find a proper solution for that and apart from that for monetization purposes we are thinking of providing in app ad advertisements that's a option other thing is if a in interstate bus is like if a volvo or travels is coming on our application we can charge them for uh, convenience we can charge them convenience fees like they are coming on our application we are giving them a, uh, giving them a, a convenience and marketing also because many people don't know like these are the buses running at these times if they come on our application they will be seen in the market and they'll have a profit on that so we can charge them on that and apart from that we can charge convenience fee for, fee from the users also at the time of payment for providing these features but at the time we can't provide anything we have to give this for free once the people people start interacting they find it useful after that we can think of uh, monetizing it and till then we can sure. think of many other ways sure no that's good thank you i'll, I'll pass it to the other judge but congratulations for what you have built so far yeah uh, are you here uh, congratulations team uh, very well good presentation and code uh, functionality wise i would not much dive because other judges are taking it up uh, my question would be related to security features uh, i know within 30 hours it's difficult to code a security but uh, you have said in your future plans you would like to address privacy and security right uh, so at app level uh, i would like i have a couple of questions the first layer is at app level uh, how are you going to uh, tackle permissions so basically what is your plan which permissions you will require how your code or a compiled app would not be reverse engineered because uh, since you would be capturing a lot of customer data and device details so how is that going to be tackled that's first okay uh, since your code is movable and it can be in cloud okay uh, the data which you have captured how are you going to secure in cloud in terms of database and how the connectivity what because uh, security in most of the things is after thought uh, so but being after thought still uh, how would like you to address this in your future okay uh, so i would like to answer about that actually uh, 
we are uh, we have actually using uh, the location services only for the uh, for the for accessing users location basically uh, and uh, regarding the location services uh, it's basically like uh, yeah just VR just just sorry to interrupt see I, I know you are asking location services but when you compile an app uh, you would compile it with certain options which would ask permissions uh, when it's installed on user device right so what's your plan which are the permissions you're going to ask that is what my question is basically okay uh, so regarding actually uh, regarding that uh, i don't uh, think i have like uh, they thought about that much but about that uh, reverse engineering part i can uh, say something if you will allow me to uh, okay uh, so Basically, for the reverse engineering, actually, uh, we can uh, implement something like the those uh, ProGuard rules and the Arit uh, Arit engine uh, that basically uh, do the code obf obfuscation. So basically, your application cannot be reverse engineered, uh, or may it may uh, require high uh, skills to reverse engineer the application that has been uh, like ProGuarded. And uh, if we use like uh, something like ProGuard, then the application size is always ready. All is all. Also reduce that as it uh, like uh, renames your classes and uh, to us uh, classes to a smaller names. So basically, the application size is also reduced uh, using that. And uh, for the location, I think I might uh, need to do some research about how what are the locations that I might want the user to be like uh, giving me the permission and how how I, I will be handling that. And the second part of my question, which is more related and to sir, data security. If you allow me, I'd like to add something on the same point. Yeah, please. Yeah, go ahead. Please. So, sir, basically, first of all, as I to, as we showed you the PPD, the first main plan of our future was to provide security to the user. That's the main priority right now because we are seeing data, data getting raw, data getting used and everything from the for monetization purposes. So that is the first and foremost important thing for us, right? And apart from that, as you said, we will we are not logging anything into the server. Like when we pass a request, I'm using MongoDB, right? So for debugging purposes, I do use. Uh, I lost path. Uh, is anybody else able to hear it? I think he got disconnected. His screen is paused. Am I audible now? Yeah. Huh. So as I was saying, once it goes into the production state. Yeah, go ahead. Huh. Now is it now is it everything fine? I, I did lose your connection for a second, but I'm back now. Yeah, you're loud and clear. Please go ahead. Yes. So as I was saying, once uh, it goes into the production state, I am removing all the logs. So basically the logs are being removed. So no one can just remove it from the logs. Apart from that, the second thing I am doing is uh, salt. We can think of sorting the data while storing in the database. So it will not be visible to us also like GPS and uh, GPS coordinates. We'll just sort it and store it in the database. So we we'll, we all also won't be able to see the data. See that you're more on privacy. My is more on security. See, you will be capturing certain customer information, right? Like you're you're logging in customer, registering him. So the next time, based on OTP, he will go back to the previous options what he has. Okay. So you're cap capturing some kind of data which you will store in some database, right? That data and even your plans are to integrate with payment gateway even if you integrate with payment gateway there would be some common denominators or parameters which you will have to store from customer customer data perspective right so how do you secure this data because uh, if anybody gets because concept wise features wise your app is i think super cool okay but from security perspective if you don't take care of these things uh, then uh, you first day your competitor will just nowadays just pulling down the competitors. If somebody just gets a copy of your data and just post it somewhere, uh, all your good work will go down, right? So functionality and security you should equally treat and try to 
बैलेंस इट आउट yes yes just yes, think sir. over that functionality we, because yes, it's sir. not only sure. about capturing the gps coordinates it's much more than that yes sir and uh, to be honest we aren't much that aware about security measures for that because well, we i understand very... parth yes that that's that's not the story with you it's that's the yes, story sir. even in enterprises uh, security is after thought basically it comes down at when it comes for testing that time there are new uh, challenges which are seen by development team or ye kyun nikala wo kyun nikala because that's an after thought i have and that's a day in day out for me i can understand that yeah sure yeah nice yes, thing thanks so meeting you we will we'll think on it and we'll take guidance from many of uh, mentors like you all and everyone next just please so we have kudus team i think it's uh, really good work that you all have done so far um, i had a couple of questions maybe you know like uh, if we can zoom out and then probably i'll zoom in back again what do you all think will be the problem like you all are entering this market you all have this app and maybe we'll give it 30 seconds uh, if not i might just course correct you all around as you all start uh, answering this like what what do you all think would be the problem and i think you all have already addressed a lot of questions with the other judges have asked which basically uh, are the key areas which you know would become like challenging keeping that aside uh, what else do you all think could be a problem so sir as you said the zooming and zooming out part i leave that to parbat but first of all i just like to solve the second question of yours then i'll ask him to lead or else if you want i can ask him to go first then i'll go no no so uh, let's let's forget the first part the first part was a metaphor like what i meant is like mm. take a thousand feet view up like mm. don't go too deep into the app take a thousand few feet view up and then say speak about like what do you think could be the problem so for which i can think of is if we zoom out a bit more there can be a certain change in the uh coordinates right a particular degree sorry i i didn't uh, forget the term zoom in zoom out path okay, like okay, just okay. ignore that term like what do you Sorry, think sir. would be the problem no no worries like what what do you think would be the problem in this whole uh, space hmm. okay, so basically me... the main issue the main issue which we could face is like we are providing live tracking right so if a if a gps system goes down or something like that goes off the person who is trying to board the next is will be a bit off he won't be able to take correct data from the for from our application that is that is still going uh, deeper in right like let's take a step back you have mm-hmm. still now always thought about one end of this whole system and that is mm-hmm. the user there mm-hmm. is a second end of this whole system who are the providers mm-hmm. like why would why would a bus come to your app over red bus like okay. what is it that you all are giving there that is the first thing that i just wanted to understand and the second thing right like i'll i'll ask that later like why do you all think that if i am a bus service right like why should i come into your system versus like red bus or somebody else so sir basically as you said you are if you are a if a person wants to join our application so the main benefits of our application would be we are pro- we will provide a market which is very friendly like if we are integrating a system which is, on which a person will come if he wants to earn more like we are giving a, try, a type of marketing for him so basically we can see that buses if but the buses are going empty if he is facing some issues if he wants to maintain also we are planning on using a providing features like for a particular or admin or the or driver if he is traveling who are the how much what the data of the customers who who took the who took the route frequent users of that route what is his earning using our application what is his profit what got is his loss got it got so it so we okay. can think on so this is helpful right this is helpful if you optimize mm-hmm. for the cost on the provider you are subvertly affecting the cost on the consumer like it's a balance right it's basically a jigsaw mm-hmm. like yes. if you are optimizing saying that i will give better cost for me as a bus provider you are affecting the consumer by charging the consumer more 
so like mm-hmm. that that's basically where like where would be the balance is something we'll have to think about and there are mechanisms to do it but i'll not go deeper into it at this point a subvert question around it was this right uh, it it goes back to one of the key challenges around this space which is concurrency on the booking again right like one is what i think um, you all mentioned which is about users coming in trying to make a payment and then we have like a, a amount of time after which we are sort of uh, timing the user out and then basis that we'll make sure that there is not a lot of lag on this whole system the second factor that i wanted to consider is uh, how do you all get to know that the same ticket like like it's not an isolated industry right like so i am trying to run this system uh, redbus is also i have listed myself on you all i have also listed myself on redbus and a few other apps how do we make sure that uh, if my ticket for a particular seat is booked on redbus you all get it because otherwise you have kept it open redbus has kept it open three other apps have kept it open how does that synchronization work like I, i understand it's not possible to implement it in 30 hours what i'm trying to understand is how do you all take that into factor and consideration why, or what would you all do while you, while thinking about that uh, problem statement uh, so basically just to go back a little bit just to implement and uh, not implementing but to provide a solution this to this question we could provide something like a request from the user side to the owner for accepting the tickets for accepting the seat that could be a solution one of the solution is that other thing as you said the concurrency of the database we can see that it is used more and more and more it is connected to like book my show where people just go in and book and all the theaters are connected and they are using the same database got so it it is uh, something you, like that makes sense so zooming in over here like and that i'll i'll after this i'll pass it over to the other judges zooming in over here right like what would be the proto of that request and what would be the response i wanted like if you could share a little bit on what exactly would be the object response and the request over here like what fields do you think would be required in that proto uh for providing that accepting feature uh basically to ensure that if a seat gets blocked or mm-hmm. locked by say someone booking on redbus or any of these mm-hmm. other apps like mm-hmm. and you need to get that right in your system what you said is mm-hmm. fair like let's say it that mm-hmm. you know that we are making a request response over here what fields do you think you would need to include in that so uh, for now at right now what i can think of is we can use something like a synchronized database in which the da- data will be listened back and forth like for example for example we can use something like socket.io where data is just passed again and again back and forth so if a person books on redbus i'll get the data directly and update i'll update it my it in my database like okay um, sorry uh, so i i told last question but just to go a bit deeper right like so how would that work right like matlab redbus needs to give that information to you like why would they give it uh, so it it doesn't go with redbus like so fundamentally there has to be a synchronizing like a master on around these different people mm-hmm. who is managing it your request would need to go to a system which is basically having that who would, whom we trust as a golden source of truth in this whole ecosystem right like what what would be the parameters of that request that you pass uh, like what do you need to know in in order to make sure that this this ticket is still available and that ties back to what was asked earlier for concurrency right like because mm-hmm. one concurrency 30 30 milliseconds of payment that is to be done or whatever the second concurrency is like if if this happens uh, what do you need to know to make sure that this ticket is still available in that 30 milliseconds or uh, time frame so for that what i can think of as you said a particular body whom we can trust and what would be we manage the data the parameters of the request the fields yes. the, like the basically what i'm trying to understand is like the fields of the request so basically as you said between that 30 milliseconds i would like to answer that first so for for that 30 second 30 milliseconds if i am the user i am trying to book i am trying to pay so just before the payment last screen last screen of the payment i can just check once if the ticket is still available if it is then i'll allow if it is not then i'll cancel the transaction so this might be one of the solution 
the other solution which you said like trusting a body for that so for that at this point i can't think of anything so oh, no worries no worries i think uh, uh, it was good it was a good idea and like the way you described it was like super helpful thank you thanks again thanks. and and good work team like really good presentation you have covered like quite a lot uh, extensively in the time slot so great work i'll pass it over to the other judges thank you sir hey uh, so one second technically this is a great presentation i i i completely appreciate the efforts you guys have put in right i have a very simple basic question <clears throat> are you building this to be a discovery app or are you building this to be a transactional app so can you just repeat the question once more my question is are you building this to be a discovery app or are you building this to be a transactional app so for basically sir discovery app we can't describe it as a discovery app because there are already competitors competitors of this in the market so first of all we if we want to thrive through the competition we have to provide something which is different from others and for that we can initially until we find a feature like that we can just provide a little free cheaper than other competitors so once we get at the top of the market we can think of other things like uh, to monetize it for basically for start we just have to step a foot in the market and strong hold the foot uh you know just a personal suggestion uh, you you have mentioned the first point as your usp as you know while most are either intercity or intracity we are both intercity and intracity hmm. right yes yes do you think there is something you know i always uh, feel this right if you are not having competitors something mm. is wrong about the business model altogether why someone has chosen to be only intercity or only intracity and not both right they they have you know millions of dollars in their funds already to do it why are mm. they not doing it these are few of the questions i mean you know if you are planning this to be a b plan down the line to be a kds to be something you guys would be giving towards just ponder upon this questions these are something i think yes. that will help you down the line right? yes yes so yes. that's just my suggestion it's too early and i think you know this 5 minutes can solve all these questions which are very deep just think around those that will just be my suggestions uh, great work on the technical side i wish you the best thank you sir so any more questions from any other judges So, so can we leave? Sure. Well, good luck and thank you. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, team. Thank you, judges. Before moving forward, we have a clip of our event sponsor, Napsums Technology. Are you looking for something that will make your website look more attractive and professional to audience? Well, we have a solution. Napsums Technology. Napsums Technology is India's premier web design and online marketing company. It is located in Mumbai and has the capability to serve clients across India. Napsums Technology provides you with innovative, creative, and attractive websites that will open new markets for your business. Napsums Technology selects high-caliber designers, skilled programmers, experienced marketing managers who will drive qualified and targeted sales leads from major search engines to their website. They strive to create professional websites which will effectively promote their clients' product or services to their target audience. They listen to their clients and develop a custom-made website which will enhance your corporate image. We are excited to have Napsums Technologies as a powered response. Next team will be joining shortly.
error by night to pitch the solution. I request the team error by night to pitch the solution. Uh, is the screen visible? No. Is the screen visible? Yeah, it's visible. Yeah. Yes, yes. Okay, so good. Good evening, everybody. I'm Akila, and we are delighted to be here. Uh, we are the team errors by night and the topic that we have selected is metadata farmer assistance which is completely based on the dom domain ai and ml uh, these are the teams and the, i'm i'm akila Kumar, who is speaking right now now uh, the topic is metadata farmers assistance now uh, the problem statement that we were given with the uh, given by the hackathon committee was um, it has it should have the feature of uh, crop quality yield detection disease detection and uh, um, weed detection. So uh, we have, um, before entering into the uh, implementation part or problem statement part, uh, like, I have a question to you all. Like imagine, imagine if you have any sort of doubts, like, maybe it's related to the real world problems or it is related to some sort of conceptual doubts where we usually go to we usually go to the Googles, right? We just search it and we anonymously search anything. Like we can, we don't check for the spellings or errors or, or grammars, we didn't check for it. We just enter it and the Google always provide a perfect and accurate solution at most 96, 99% you can see. So these are, uh, we, we so blindly trust Googles uh, in such a way that we don't reassure ourselves from any other websites. We don't reassure ourselves. So we want to create a problem, uh, uh, create a software for the uh, with the same logic for the farmers as well. Uh, excuse me, I guess someone's mic is on. Would you please search off? I am hearing the echo. Oh, OK. So yeah, now that's fine. So we want to implement the same logic into the farmer for the farmers as well. Like farmers, they get to know, uh, they have, they face so much, they undergo through so much problems. And uh, you can see the suicidal rates. It has been completely, uh, it has been high for some, uh, for the latest records. And uh, they, uh, before, uh, they didn't have this knowledge, like uh, if they are growing some plants, they are not sure, like if this is going to provide some yield or not. If they have disease, they are not they are not provided well provided with the uh, solution. Like if there is a disease, if this disease is there, what is this disease and what cures would be there, and so on. So much problems the farmers face. So we want to uh, build an application which can solve all the problems of these uh, farmers. Now we have used the concept of precision agriculture, where uh, wherein um, wherein the uh, soil informations where the conditions are taken into account and we suggest the farmer to which crop they have to grow and uh, what would be the yield that would be coming out through it and so on uh, so the contents that we have covered in our project are uh, uh, crop recommendation system uh, disease detection and curance weed prediction yield prediction crop quality and fertilizer recommendation um, heading on to the crop recommendation, I'll just run through the slides because uh, while implementation time, I'll explain uh, detail like uh, which models we have used and all. Uh, I'll say that like uh, it mostly depends on these factors like temperature, humidity, atmosphere, and NPK values like nit nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium value. And we have used name-wise algorithms and the output will be which crop we have to grow in a particular area. Uh, second uh, feature is disease detection. The image of the uh, disease of the uh, plant disease would be up uh, uploaded. And um, that which plant disease, which plant uh, leaf it is, which what is the disease, what are the cause of the disease, and what would be the remedy of the disease would be predicted. And um, this is the weed detection system wherein you can see the bounding boxes. We have used YOLO for algorithm. You only look once algorithm. That's uh, uh, on a one flow we uh, detect the object. Here we have used uh, like if uh, you know we would create a most issues like uh, they are harmful they look simple but they're completely harmful so we have the farmers need to detect like if what if this part is of the crop or not so we have this uh, data you know that bounding boxes have been created uh, and the weight is present like this percentage is uh, consists of crops and this is of weed etc uh, so this would be the output 
next is yield uh, yield prediction which would uh, after entering these values like weather conditions pesticides and area and some uh, npk values as well so it would predict the yield like how much yield we would uh, we would get after like harvesting um next is crop quality uh, is the crop good or not if, like after after applying some some, some pesticides we would be not sure like how much if like that pesticides have created an effect on the crop or not so on the basis of that soil type crop type and pesticides are used we predict the quality of the crop like it's good or in a bad state and we have used pnn algorithms and this is fertilization recommendation system we again it's like soil crop atmosphere same values we input and if there is unique in some nutrient less like if npk value is less then it would say that what should be uh, you know how much amount of water we should give amount of water is not like specific but uh, it says like you have to increase the amount or decrease and then uh, what fertilizers we have to use and all that would be predicted here uh, this is the architecture diagram of our entire system um, we can zoom in uh, like we have created a zoom in images of all these uh, fields the first field is crop quality wherein the input is all these three features and the output is crop healthy or not the second is yield prediction again the input values and the yield uh, output as uh, seen this is weed detection system wherein again image is input and output will be the bounding with bounding box and crops and weeds this is a disease detection architecture diagram this is the feature of uh, fertilizer recommendation and crop recommendations architecture diagram um the data flow diagram we have going to show, show is this we have created a pretend models now uh, we have uh, we have used data sets of various uh, from we have uh, picked data sets which are freely available and we have trained a model in, uh, and we have created a pickle file and that pickle file would uh, the user would enter the in, uh, input and that uh, input is passed to the model and then model will predict according to the models which are classified which are like based on and this is how the data flow works now um, Uh, let's see the implementation part, and then we we'll come into the business value point. That implementation part would be shown by uh, Miss um, Mr. Pr Prathamin Gavle. So this is the website, uh, which is we have named it as Agrofy. It solves the issues of uh, you can see like what crop to plant, what fertilizer to use. All these issues of farmers have been solved here. The next is the about us section, which we have included. Um, when uh, scrolling down, this is the about us section. These are the services that we have provided. Like, uh, let's go on to the crop recommendation system. So again, crop recommendation system. It is based on NPK values. pH and rainfall state so let's randomly enter the values like it is 20 contains a rainfall is like 100 or something state karnataka city let's say bilgam bilgam so now it would predict so you should grow manbean in your farm manbean So next, let's see the fertilizer part. Um, this is nitrogen again. Here for fertilizers, we have to put NPK ratio. Uh, let's phosphorus. Put, let's put one of uh, ten. Four, okay. Uh, potassium. Let's put some less ten. Crop you want to select, you can select the crops, and uh, let's predict it on. So here you can see the p value is high. So, what are the suggestions they are providing? Like avoid ma adding manure, manures, and use only phosphorus-free fertilizers. Uh, then water your soil, like soaking your soil, like something. Uh, it is explained it, and then plant nitrogen-fixing vegetables. Like uh, they have give, given a detail. Like use crop rotation to decrease, uh, to uh, to decrease high phosphorus levels. Oh, Hello. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Please. Maybe there was some disturbance. Please go. Was my uh, voice? Uh, was my voice? Yeah. You're audible. Yeah. So these are uh, the uh, predicted values of the uh, fertilizer crop. Uh, so these are the predicted values of the fertilizer crop. So these are the predicted values of the fertilizer crop. So these are the predicted values of the fertilizer crop. So these are the predicted values of the fertilizer crop. So these are the predicted values of the fertilizer crop. So these are the predicted values of the
Now let's see the part. Uh, uh, let's see the disease de detection part. Um, we have to upload the image which has a di some disease in it. Uh, that's the image of a plant. Mm, let's see the tomato. Okay, it's, it's um, a plant. So let's predict on it. So it says it is a uh, leaves of a cherry and it has a disease of powdery mild, uh, mild, mild dew. So and this is the causes of the disease and how to prevent is this uh, part. Sorry to interrupt, team, but you just have five minutes left to pitch your solution. Yeah, 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 sure, sure. Next, uh, we are going to so, uh, show is uh, these are the prevent and cure part. Uh, crop quality. Crop quality. Uh, you have to uh, estimated insect counts, then crop type one or zero, like food crop or feed crop. Then is the soil is of good quality and pesticides category is like uh, one medium good or low pesticide type. The number of doses we have to put up a week and pesticides used in a week. Pesticides not used for like for some time we, we don't use pesticides. So that count then the season like the summer, rainy or winter. And then we have to predict the quality. So this uh, shows the quality. Your crop quality is found to be good. Next is yield prediction part. So uh, this is the UI of the yield prediction. We haven't integrated it. You can see the values. Um, let me present. So uh, I show you the model that we have created for it. Okay, am I visible? Oh, is the screen visible? Okay. Uh, so this is the this is the yield prediction part that we have trained the model here. You can see the data. You can see the uh, these are the contents that we have to user has to input like nitrogen and all these all features. And we have here we have done the days data visualization and we have uh, uh, analyzed the data EDA part you can say. And then we have trained the model over here. Uh, at the end, uh, this is all visualization part and this is gradient boost and uh, we have trained and it's like updating the values like. Blue dots is the actual value and red lines is the predicted values. And this is like how it runs. This is the yield prediction model we have created. There is one more uh, uh, model we have created that is weed detection. Follow me with share the screen. Yeah, is my uh, screen is visible? Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, here we have initially uh, pre-processed the data. Also, we have done the image augmentation part so that we can increase the data set and modify, create the modified version of it. Here we have used the object detection model that is YOLO4, and we have uh, used the uh, perform the object localization using box plotting technique. So, like uh, we have here created the detection function. Just a second. Uh, when we will run the detection function call, we have to pass the image path. So here is the uh, image that we have been detected. Here it shows that the weed has been detected in this image. It has been showed in a red uh, box. Sorry box. to interrupt team, but you just have yes. two minutes left. Yeah, so it shows the uh, percentage level also that uh, it has been, pre it has been pre predicted the weed in this image. And that's it. We have uh, used the uh, trained the model using ResNet 101 trained learning model. Uh, now, coming to the business value, coming back to the PPT presentation part. The technologies that, uh, I guess the screen is okay. The technologies that we have used is for front end, we have HTML and cases. Back end, we have used ML models and DL models. Integration, integration of front end and back end is done by Python Flask. Now, coming to the estimation part, like manpower cost that we would have required, uh, since we are third year students of PCT, and uh, we have this uh, subject like uh, software engineering. So on the basis of the knowledge of that subject, we have created all this um, uh, manpower cost calculation or software estimation calculation we have done. So ma manpower cost, you can say, rupees to like 35,000. And um, this is software estimation account we have done. 
this is the final project cost would be three crore uh, 44 lakhs and 84,000 you can say. Um, this is scalability. Scalability is an uh, um, multi multilingual implementation. Like um, uh, for India, there is so many of languages. We have to focus on like uh, uh, every state. We are like uh, focusing on every state and their uh, languages. Like every language state has different languages. So for farmers, they should not be knowing English. So we are focusing on that to create uh, other languages as well. Uh, now we have US, uh, just two minutes, uh, just okay. 10 seconds. Okay. okay. Uh, the data sets we have used is mostly of uh, USA. So we are focusing since Indian data sets weren't available. So for uh, the third part is soil testing using IoT, uh, using soil sensors and, and PK ratio, the temperature, humidity, and testing the soil and capturing pictures through live camera. We have used the photo uploading part. The last, uh, the, we can use also use the, like live camera capture and just predict the model. That's a scalability part. And that's it. Thank you from our sides. Good job, I team. Uh, to start with the Q&A session. Yeah, mm -hmm. I will start with the questions. So, good job and very interesting topic. Yes. And first of all, I will start off with some non-technical questions. Okay. And since we are focused more on Indian farmers and start off with Indian farmer story, the suicidal yeah. stuff and the financial debt a farmer has to go through. So, one more thing that we are ignoring is a farmer is not a literate person. He doesn't know to speak English. He doesn't know to use a mobile phone. He doesn't even know to use how the camera works. Okay. And most challenging part is how will you make him understand use a mobile phone or maybe make him understand how this technology will help him to improve his overall farming experience. Right. And farming not only has been a booming sector for the past two to three years, even a 20 year old or 25 year old also want to get into organic farming. So it is, it is a trending and a booming sector. But coming back to farmers, how will you make them understand and convince that this is this is something that is very beneficial? Take it, write down the questions, then you can uh, answer them one by one. Okay. Uh, and uh, one more question is, I mean, you have trained your model based on something which is not available in India. Indian geographical conditions and, and uh, stuff is much different than what is there in Alabama and US. Okay. The the soil pH level, nitrogen level is completely different from which is found in India. Okay. And you have worked extensively on image detection, image comparison, and all these algorithms are readily available. All these data sets are readily available. Okay. I want to know what different have you tried? Did you guys uh, implement a new algorithm? Did you guys, I mean, uh, build a new data set that you came across while uh, experimenting here in India? Also, after uh, running through this prediction model, how, did you do any live testing of any of the sample just to check this accuracy level, whether the uh, the model prediction accuracy and the real uh, time testing of that specific leaf was accurate enough to predict that our model is pretty much there on the accuracy level that we are expecting. Okay. And one more question is, I mean, this project has a good scope of IoT. I did not see IoT being mentioned or used anywhere because I mean you need to intimate farmers when the pH level goes down or when the crop crop starts to decay or when the fungus starts to creep in. That's the point when you need to intimate the farmers. So IoT is something that I feel key is missing over here. Okay. And are we checking the soil quality? So even soil quality, are we gonna go with the prediction model? Or I mean, there could be some team member from your project team visiting the farmers, helping them out to understand uh, what exactly is the pH level of the soil and what balance do they need to maintain periodically to maintain a good crop quality. Or the, because I mean, weathers are not going to be constant; it keeps on changing. Sometimes it's going to be heavy rain, sometimes it's going to be dry. So it needs different kinds of nutrition for the crops to uh, maintain their nutrition level. Okay, uh, and few other questions that I meant. Uh, written down, just give me a second. Yeah, so these are my questions. I mean, you can answer one by one. Yep. Go ahead. Um, sorry to see, like, um, like. Is it is it possible like we are together so if they interpret to be my answer or like is it okay right like if I'm saying some answers and they have some idea like uh, like they would be putting it on 
um the first That's question you asked yeah so the first question that you asked like, if the farmers are illiterate um and then how we would like so for that we have used a multilingual multilingual for that we have like future scope is multilingual languages now a uh, multi languages even the farmers don't have uh, phones that's true and um, like arogya setu app you know that app have been so famous uh, uh, during the covid time that that you know that fear of uh, covid created so uh, fear, so much fear us and like we fear, we downloaded it we used it and similarly there are some apps uh, that farm up uh, it's not specifically farmers use and uh, now in india if you look on even the normal uh, local vendors have a smartphone i'm not sure if they they know how to use it or not but they have now uh, we can say that most of the farmers doesn't have or most of the farmers have we can say approximately 50% so 50% like the who's who have we can create the features like uh, multi languages and they uh, we have to put like nitrogen now we find like what nitrogen ratio have to put now they, they conduct the soil tests and they find this npk ratios through government now uh, that would be also in their state languages because state government check it out now after the the word that would be in marathi or hindi or something so uh, after the they are this language to... so just yeah. a question what if the farmer doesn't know to read english uh, like if some th- a farmer doesn't know to Eng- uh, read to english uh, they are not yeah, adapted I mean, to read the... yeah yes I mean, there could be a case where a farmer doesn't know to read or write, or maybe But, there is uh, no such. Say, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Sir. Sir, can uh, you can continue? Hello. Yeah, please continue. 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 Yep. Um, like um, every person at least know their mother languages, and uh, in state they have like uh, like if I'm yeah I'm living in Maharashtra. And at least all the people knows Marathi and read. And state government uh, peoples they also provide their reports like soil test reports. They provide it in the uh, uh, in the state languages itself. So they know to read the reports. And we provide the same feature in our website. So multi languages pro- uh, that would help them. Uh, you know, if they uh, nitrogen we have to find. We'll provide the name that would be in Marathi nitrogen and that uh, ratio. The same soil test would also have. So they can you know look on it. and uh, you know compare it and then put on the values so these uh, this would solve the problem of the person who has the uh, smartphones now those who doesn't have the smartphones there are uh, uh, like a parents they uh, literally uh, give some freedom like if they don't have they provide us with so we if we can provide that information to farmers at least we can that provide uh, provide that information to the youths that would help their parents to evolve right and uh, you know, most of the youth youth is like the strong of the strong part of the country uh, uh, country so uh, making aware of the youth can help the farmers to help as well and that's the part of the first question that farmer is related second uh, like we have created this data we have used the data sets of the usa and all these united states countries the part, uh, second the part is like we didn't get the data sets of india the one which we got it was focusing on 101 uh, 100 countries you uh, 100 countries you can see and we trained that model that accuracy is as well i but we we are not able to integrate it now focusing on india yes it is right that so soil values ph values are completely different but we are not available with the uh, uh, the uh, data sets if we are provided with the data sets if the government is collecting the information regarding the farm and providing the data says we are completely we are uh, we can create the model and we can train create that model by training that data data says so the only way to make in uh, this app eligible or to to stand this uh, project in india we have to create the data says now creating data says is not completely easy for to get the higher accurate accuracy we have to at least include lags of rows and columns and all so creating manually is an invisible solution and so i would i would say like government has to take this uh, you know initiative to find uh, to find a look at the data uh, create all this data sets and provide with us to uh, you um, build the model and after building the model it would be we can stand it on and the third part is uh, live testing uh, build new data sets and build new algorithms uh, we haven't gone on through these new algorithms thing because uh, we are in third year and we are still learning all these machine learning mo- models and real models that we have uh, that been created or used uh, we didn't had much knowledge before entering into the uh, before entering to third year so 
in third year we are trying to understand everything and after getting into the fourth year we can predict uh, like we can create our own algorithms and then we can use uh, our you know uh, ideology to scale this project uh live testing i iot means i can say uh, iot um, uh, that, that like uh, as you said about iot we were thinking about iot things uh, like uh, predicting the nl uh, nlp values uh, testing soil for that uh, we are we are going to use iot projects it will be our future scope Cool, cool. Yeah, and the last question that you ask is soil quality. Is there some people going to make uh, make uh, go to the farmers and make them aware? Uh, that's like how much area we can target. And only our college can only target max to max. We can only target Maharashtra. We can't go to complete India and they explain there how to you know manage their soil. So we can create an informative website. and that uh, we can publish it and you can even you can also integrate that website to, to the government and uh, that website will contain like uh, how to handle with the weather conditions if soil quality is uh, like we can put all these find this information and create a website and uh, uh, that inform that uh, website could contain any information like soil quality information or weather condition information and we can publish it on government and since it is government based the people would trust on government so that's the fourth answer for soil quality and also did you uh, get a chance to cross check uh, the results with live testing results? yeah live testing i missed that part oh, we didn't take the actually click the photo of any plant up because we were completely in a room uh, in a in a college premises the live testing mm -hmm. we have done through google we have uh, anonymously uh, downloaded any images any images and just checked and uh, the crop name that appears we checked it on the google like is that crop leaf is that leaf belonging to the same crop or not and is this is this existing or not So we have done that part, live testing part. We have done using Google, but Google images. Okay. Okay. I mean, I passed to the other judges. Yeah, I could go next. Uh, I think, like, first of all, really good uh, job. I think it's it's uh, it's a great work that you all have brought here. So I appreciate like all the effort that you all have put in. Um, one one factor that i wanted to call out like um, fair like we we don't have a data set in uh, for india and uh, it's it's an open problem that we are trying to solve for like you all are basing the model on a data set from us uh, which can result into force fitting uh, like given the knowledge that you all are creating this for india and you're using a data set from us uh, and the constraints that we have that is like you are limited within this 30 hours or for that matter like you know the uh, geographical boundaries um, what factors do you think you could consider to retro like basically to avoid the uh, impact of uh, using a data set which is not representative of this population for which you are building the solution like the idea of i and it's it's what you said uh, akila is absolutely correct right like i agree to that point that if you don't have a data set like you, you might not be able to do it but i think like the factor of ml and this the problem itself is a tough problem to solve like it's not something where there is an existing solution that exists in the market which is really good to like sort of build on but if you have to build it right like the how do you go about it like so it's it's not that you don't have the data set the reality of this problem is that nobody literally has a data set which is confident enough for indian market and it's a moonshot problem to be solved so given that people are still trying like so what do you think you can do in the constraints to go about this and try and build on the model so how like the idea of tuning the model like what are you thinking about tuning uh, to handle this model and tune it given the constraints that we have so the constraints that you mentioned like uh, this uh, 30 hours and all so uh, if this constraints was not there there is a website called farm.io i'm not sure the website name is right or not but there is an actual website where the government provides information of a particular crop like uh, i have seen the complete website that um, you know they have created this uh, they go for every home and they check this va uh, values of every persons like how much is the age same the same method is applied for crops as well 
so uh, for particular each crop or each crop or each state they have created a, a you know that form of information type they have collected that information like for if i go on to the website that website contains like a corn agriculture and then it like state wise uh, information and and state wise you can see the entire information of the farmers who is growing that co farm uh, that corn farm so uh, uh, if we had enough of our time like uh, approximately one years or something we are creating with our mini project or uh, our final year project we would be doing like we would analyze that information we would create our own data sets based on that information but creating that data sets would approximately take uh, like 6 to 7 months to create the entire data sets for each models so if the constraints were not there this would be the solution that we would be doing okay so uh, like uh... maybe in the interest of time right i'll just go a little bit faster like um, uh, two questions that i have there right like the first part is just a follow up to your existing question that uh, to your answer uh, if we just want to take into consideration for 70% or the first standard deviation of the population to be handled let's forget the ex uh, outliers and like the uh, the tail ends right on both sides because that will take a lot of time to solve acknowledged if we are just trying to consider the first set like how much of a sample size do you think would be required in order to for you to say that you know this would be like a good enough uh, problem space to be solved and second thing in the slides you have mentioned an accuracy of 84% in the sample set that you all had like what proportion did you use for like testing and validating versus what proportion did you use for like actually training the model like so that's that's the uh, part on that accuracy and the second part on that accuracy is that uh, what is the threshold for that accuracy so how are you all defining the threshold um, like is there an f score is there anything like or in in very layman terms right like when you said 84% accuracy like how are you all defining that uh, 84% accuracy Sorry, the I first part. No, I'm starting. The first part you said, like we have to focus on seventy percent uh, population. Um, yeah, considering the population of India, it's um, okay. like to create the data sets. We may require like millions and billions of information because people. Uh, it's not regarding the populations, but uh, for if we have to create a data set, I guess it would cross a uh, lags because uh, there are so much farms. If farms are all divided in, and there are so much types of soils. in india yes uh, rainfall variations are, are completely different in all the parts of the india so it would cross the data sets and creating and actually i said that creating data sets that uh, but if i create that uh, data set i won't be able to reach like lags uh, lag rows and columns and all so that would that model would not be completely accurate and completely trustable right because uh, um all these values are so uh, india because of these variations in india we can't create a, we can't judge on just between thousands and 10000 uh, data sets so um, again uh, more, you ask for the data sets count uh, the columns count yeah so it would cross lags the second part is the accuracy that you have asked accuracy we have used uh, in a uh, different models we have used different methods like we have cross uh, cross val score uh, functions we have used then we have uh, categorical cross entropy then we have do, done Uh, we have uh, r square value you said yeah that uh, r square value we have used uh, like every model has its the own final or, uh, accuracy final when, so i understand that was a particular use... model i so, don't remember so it, which model accuracy okay, it was okay so is there right, like so, okay, got it got yeah. it fine and and on the first part right like um, what is the solution like it does not exist like i mean i'm just yeah. and i i'm not saying that you know like it's it's not uh, something that you all would have to build or something what i'm trying to understand is just keeping your imaginations open like this is a problem like how do you solve for it in a real world scenario like what can you do when you don't have a data set like and and in all yeah, sure. see the That's... moment i saw this topic uh, i realized that you know this is going to be like a very tough one to solve like the i saw it on the website i realized this is going to be a super challenging one to solve like but because the data set does not exist but how do you do it like because end of the day like data sets did not exist even when google started data sets did not exist even for the us market like and i'm not like again to reiterate i'm not saying that you all have done a fantastic job what i'm trying to understand is how do we think about solving a problem like that <clears throat> uh we can use google forms for the 
uh, soil values like that. And after that, uh, when we uh, we can export it in, uh, in an Excel file and we can create a CSV file. After that, we can uh, create a pickle file. It can be implemented. So I think crowdsourcing um, is what you're pointing towards, which is, I think, what Chetan is trying to help you towards understand that some of these things can be solved by crowdsourcing and allowing those end user to participate in system to feed into the data, which will really help to build your data set richer way to yes. run your model. Hmm. Again, adding to the point that you said, like if data sets were not there, how that's a real problem. Like if data sets are not there, how can we train a particular model? Now, data of uh, MLs and AI, all these models are existence because of the data sets. We train them based on the data sets. So if um, there has to be something new, like the te the technologies are getting so advanced and like getting robots and like all. So we have to find a method like without being uh, without data set also we can train the model by like looking at the field like um some of the we have these qualities like by looking we can understand robot robots we are adding the sensors like uh, almost 16 sensor uh, like um i have read that uh ameka robot uh, that all so in that robot head has phase 16 sensors in his in her face so like using uh robot robotic you can all you can also solve this problem but for that we have to get into some com completely advanced knowledge uh, trends and knowledge no thank you i'll i'll pass it over to the other judges just one final closing point is uh just to like you know sort of clarify we cannot without a data set so the question that i had wasn't for like how do we do it without a data set the question was more around how do we create that data set like you did that uh, to a, yeah uh, i interpreted it wrong yeah. no, no worries Thank yeah you. and to support yeah. this point i would also like to i mean to pitch in one more point i mean i saw the budget of the project maybe some some more budget has to be allocated for building a data set too i think we did ignore that <laughs> 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 yes. the pioneer of this project i think some budget has to be allocated for building data set too yes Actually, that uh, value is theoretically. Actually, we are learning software engineering. So from that, we, we have used that value. knowledge. That's yeah, not a practical value. We have tried yeah. max to like software, estimate the model. Yeah. I'll yeah. come in, I'll chip in with one. a quick question. I'll chip in with a quick question. Uh, you know, guys, if you go around, I think a lot of investments are being done in this field lately. In the last couple of years, right? And you rightly mentioned you guys are studying data science, etc. Right? So instead of thinking this way that you're trying to build a B2C version where probably your target customers are in farmers, if you are trying to build a B2B version where the you know a lot of people are going directly to the farmers, taking data, trying to create something. Why don't you create a backend of it, create a B2B version where you are analyzing the data, create something like Mu Sigma. You don't have to be always, you know, the, the, uh, end customer solution, right? You guys could think around this. That's my only solution, uh, suggestion out there. Yep. And I'll just, uh, just probably add uh, one thing. I mean, it's, it's a really important problem to solve. I'm really, I'll congratulate to, uh, you, the team error by night that name is also good and I'll, <laughs> I'll i'll probably congratulate on that that one part that it's the real world problem which uh when sort of software engineering is it's testimony that software engineering can be applied to the all sorts of problem and this is one real problem which you can apply for i think one point you also need to understand about the technology aspect uh, which you can take immense use of the uh, computing power of the uh, specially cloud computing around this because you would require uh, uh, once you have huge try to show, uh, show running of your model through some Google Studio on uh, online through Colab which was good so I think you lost connection, I guess, uh, for uh, across five seconds, I guess.
three to five courses. There has been little lag. Yeah, yeah, there was. Yeah. Yeah, there was a connection issue. Hello. Yeah, Hemant can uh, maybe Better. restart your. Oh, restart. Okay. Ask. Yeah, I mean it wasn't specific question, but just the observation which you should consider is about the uh, technology aspect which you should uh, consider in in the progress of this project. Uh, and and just solution that how you how would you support uh, sourcing of data that was one point Chetan mentioned but also how would you use that data store and run your model on which requires immense amount of computing power and in your technology solution you you should look to utilize uh, some of this capability available uh, through cloud computing which allows you to store your data in 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 easier way but also yeah, allowing you to return your um, models there uh, and that is something would be very key key point for success of this project uh, because without that immense computing power you won't be able to solve this problem so you need to well learn understand and and have, have that in your system design uh, how would you uh, use cloud computing there so that would be one other thing I would just mention, but otherwise, really good problem to solve. And what we have tried to achieve within the 50 hours is really commandable. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Uh, so, Arif, uh, yeah, again, like all others said, uh, it's a in a short span of time, you've done a good work. Uh, I appreciate that. Uh, and the problem which you are trying to address is a real world problem. And the impact it would have on the communities at larger, greater extent, right? Secondly, uh, the technology which you are going to use uh, is uh, AIML, right? There are two parts to it. One is data set, another is the algorithm, correct? And if you have seen uh, or if you have been reading, uh, there are nations which are fighting against each other, not at uh, physical or war. It's more of a digital war, right? And uh, it's more of a targeting critical infrastructure. Mm -hmm. And you're trying to solve a problem uh, which impacts farmers, right? Okay. And uh, they will have a faith in you on the model which you develop and algorithms which you have developed, right? And as Chetan and everybody pointed out, uh, AIML is not that easy to crack, right? Mm -hmm. uh, with all this complexity, right? Uh, I know it's, uh, it's the kind of level you are there and put hours here. Uh, my question, two questions are very simple. One is uh, commercially viable. How you make this solution? Because you are targeting a very poor community, largely poor community. There are farmers who are rich, but large population of farmers is still uh, you know the conditions. I don't want to reiterate that. How you would commercially make viable for them, uh, seeing the numbers which you have put, how like Satik or somebody else, like the investor who put the money and what he will get, that's one. Secondly is, uh, again, on the cyber side, uh, how are your models or algorithms going to be secure where somebody does not do a system manipulation or poisoning of those models so that they give large false positive and this false positive would have a greater impact just not on farmers but on an economy uh, so if you can address this too that would be helpful uh, so actually for fundraising we can do fundraising for uh, um, farmers so they can take our product uh, uh, regarding that commercially viable point Okay, regarding the commercially vi viable point, um, there is uh, this method like uh, we can. Uh, the first method is like we can. Uh, we why why do we have to invest use these investors? Why can't government can put their money? And how government can um, uh, acquire this money is by like we can see the populations of India. Uh, it's completely large. You can say it's millions and it's billions. So even if we collect one amount, one rupee for even for this. Uh, uh, for just collect this one rupee per, from per person, you will get the uh, you will get at least a little bit amount to you know begin with the project. After beginning with the project, government and all other investors now invest in this. Why should they pro uh, provide? 
uh, why should they invest in the first fact the very uh, after beginning with this like when we were ca calculating all the software metrics we put this point like we should make this farmer feasible uh, feasible like uh, affordable now the main point is like farmers they get a little bit from their crops so if we put this point like if they have to pay for this uh, to recommend to use these models that would not be a, a you know farmers would not use because it's not their it's their condition is just like that yes, so why can't we it. make once this you said uh, you would go to government and get it funded okay that that solves your problem yeah okay the second, second part, part of it would be pratham would be explaining uh cyber side models ko agar models ko kitna attack kare so protect kar sakte hain first of all models ko humne Uh, for cyber security we can uh, use uh, many cloud computing uh, websites like aws they are also no, no. my my secure cyber side question was more towards your model or algorithm and how the security out around it would be so that there so are no actually, false positive so. because the impact of your false positive is directly going to have a impact on farmers Uh, actually, there is a lag in voice. Yeah, somebody else can volunteer if my voice is not clear. No, I think uh, what uh, RF sir was basically uh, trying to point out is uh, end of the day, right? Whatever you all build with whatever constraints, imagining mm -hmm. it's not a perfect mm -hmm. world, there are constraints. Uh, end of the day, what you are building. end users are trusting your product like if you give them a wrong recommendation like the farmer and the farmer implement it like imagine the repercussions that will end up happening onto the product so what i think his point that he was trying to uh, point out is like how do you all handle it or in other terms uh, what will you all optimize for for would you all optimize for coverage or precision and if you all optimize for precision would it be like you know Uh, false positives, false negatives. Like, what is it that you would fundamentally optimize for in this uh, scenario? And we know the constraints. Like, the constraints are all acknowledged. Like, given the constraints, what do you think? Uh, what would you optimize for? Like, so that the end impact on the farmers is minimal. And also, what Arif sir uh, really meant was, I mean, how will you secure your systems? Like you guys use computer, right? And there is an antivirus to protect your computer. Like, how will you hmm. protect this data? What it? Oh, sorry. Yeah. Then I I probably asked the wrong one. So that's a different one. Yeah. Ah, yeah. uh, no, no. You both you covered it both well. That both it, it was overall question seventy thousand feet. <laughs> oh, so we can encrypt the data to secure it. Yeah. Okay. But give it a thought. Uh, not right now, but give it a thought later. Let's move on. Let us stop there. So we have uh, we have to leave. Uh, this weekend. Yeah, I think uh, like before we move, like yeah, the, the only one thing. Sorry, I think yeah, like uh, it's pretty. I think you all uh, gave like a good uh, presentation and like yeah, just some uh, open thoughts that we had was like you know what would the optimization be? How would the security fundamentally be handled? So those were like thoughts that you all might want to consider if you all go deeper into this space. Okay. Actually, so, we didn't answer the part because uh, uh, cyber security we have included in the fourth sem, fourth uh, fourth year. So we are we don't have the security knowledge till now. So we have to. That's that's fine. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. I think you guys can leave. The host will take over the call. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Great. Great presentation. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. I think the host took a break, dinner break. Before moving forward, we have a clip of our event sponsor, G Systems. Having trouble getting your business off the ground? 
Has your business grown at a slow pace? Now you all can leave the issues to the system and focus on your business more. The systems. They have been working in the field for approximately 20 years. They deal with major companies like HP and Cisco. It is a digital platform for the delivery of local services to clients. They assist the businesses to grow significantly. They also help in increasing the prospects and sales compared to businesses with no web presence. They focus on user requirements and provision of expert services to them. The G system offers a free, easy to use service to their clients. I request team 7 to share their screen and pitch the sol their solution. Yeah, I'll be sharing the screen. Uh, is it visible? Uh, yes, yes, it's visible. So I'd like to start off by introducing ourselves. Uh, our team uh, includes Jay, Isha, Aditya, and uh, me, Akash. We are all students from Thermal Shani Engineering College uh, in Mumbai. And uh, even though we're students, we we all want you to treat us as career space executives because we are trying to sell our products like Shark Tank. So I hope that will be more helpful and uh, might uh, enhance our experience too. And uh, we'll start by going to the next slide. Um. So. what is the problem basically so what we thought to ourselves as we are in the fourth year throughout the four years which we have been in there have been a lot of decisions that we could have made which we did not like basically career advice which we should have had and we did not we have done all the wrong decisions and we have done all the wrong things but now two of us are sitting for placement and two, two of us are going for masters so there there was a big drastic decision prospect which we had to do so who has this problem um, it's basically us the new and upcoming graduates uh, who want to become engineers and why should this problem be solved uh, we think that as our generation we all need to sit for placements and help better increase the economy of our country because unemployment rates are low high and it all changes respectively uh, for the students after they go for placements so we want to improve that factor of our country so that it can better itself and how will we solve this problem uh, i believe that if we work more on this side career space it can finally help solve this problem so our features are basically a career road map a career prediction uh, we try to analyze the market trends of the job we have given a consultancy feature and our final thing is the resume builder and we'll be happy to show you the demo now so obviously this starts with our main page uh, but if you click on get started it will obviously if the person wants to use our site it'll take us to the login page once we click on get get started and uh, the user will uh, obviously they can register but we'll just uh, for the sake of time we'll uh, do the username and login and if aditya logs in uh, he gets hi aditya and then he can go through the site and see all the services i would like to mention that the tech stack we which we use is all over the place we use so many things because each and every one of us knew different different things like uh, we have used html css uh, there is python flask uh, php is coming up at some point and so is mysql for backend um so i like to start with our services so uh, going on to career road map so first of all i want to know that our tar target audience will be students or uh, college students so in this page road map page uh, all the jobs the students would get after his or her degree are displayed so just you can scroll down and for example let's say i want to become a data scientist and uh one what i don't know what is a data scientist what skills should i learn what job opportunities salaries and trends etc are needed so basically i need a road map for this so i will click the read more button you will see the page will take 3 to 4 seconds to load because we are scraping data from google youtube and linkedin so uh, when it will dis, uh, when it will come on uh, wait just wait for 2 seconds yeah first you can see uh, the job section so for your uh, you can see the job description posted by google recently posted by google so th this is the description which includes skills for the for the for the job job responsibilities your task uh, then uh, there are several jobs posted here then when you go on to block section 
you'll see like when you want to gain knowledge about data science you will read the blog obviously so when i just click on read so it will be redirected redirected to us some blog posted by some site uh, then uh, the next query will be courses so uh, obviously if i want to become a data scientist uh, i would want to learn stuff from in that domain so these are the top results of the courses available online uh, this data was scraped directly from youtube api so uh, up, yeah the video will be played when i just uh, redirect to it and the last is connection query so as we know linkedin is a super important app for us nowadays and it's important to know about someone who who is a data scientist already and so it's important to have connections with them so we can check their linkedin profile analyze what work all work they have done so we can follow their footsteps yeah then uh, then going on to our next service so now yeah. we talk about career prediction obviously there are so many subjects in our four years of engineering it's actually countless and it's difficult to even uh, think about what we're going to do so we need something that might help us to you know maybe give us an idea ki what job we should do so if i see all these all these different uh, attributes can be given so for example computer network can be given from not interested to professional and each and every one of those has a value from 0 to nth so if there are like seven so if professional is the seventh thing then it will have seven and these are all the attributes that will be used in they are in the database and then then this will be used in a knn and then this model will help us give us a job which might be good for us so if we click on discover ourselves and also we used multiple models and knn gave us like the best accuracy it was about 95 or 96 and so that is that is why we chose this model so yes so now we can see that obviously we've done it randomly now so uh, it's showing graphics designer with all the abilities that i added and then when we click on it maybe uh, the person might think that graphic designer is still something i'm not sure for we can always redirect them back to the jobs page and they can still go through all the other jobs that are available on our site and the next module will be resume a uh, consultancy which will be taken by uh, yeah so i'll be explaining the consultancy service here the profiles of the professions are given also you can uh, view their profiles on linkedin by clicking on the link given there uh, and our consultancy is a our consultancy is a, a monthly paid uh, service uh, we have uh, used stripe payment we have used stripe payment gateway for uh, for making payments and we are using test mode uh, in stripe so uh, since we were asked to monetize the website uh, we came up with this idea of having a consultancy service of uh, industry professionals first we thought of having advertisements uh, but uh, but that would make the website look less professional so uh, so we opted for this it's uh, taking a little bit time i guess the stripe api is slow no. yeah it's loading yeah so uh, as i mentioned earlier this is a, a monthly subscription and uh, by paying 500 you will get access to our uh, advanced services like premium services so here after you make the payment yeah so the payment is successful and and now you are uh, on the premium page uh, so uh, this is the list of all the professionals that we have hired and uh, you can chat with them uh, by using uh, and by using a secure medium like uh, we have preferred a secure medium like whatsapp uh, rather than having a, a chat chat system because uh, we think that people would trust whatsapp more uh, since our application is new and so here uh, so here you can send your a uh, mentor a uh, link for your video chat we have also implemented the video chat features so uh, we chose this medium rather than our traditional google meet because uh, we wanted to promote small developers so our site will be more uh, more mo monetized this also has features like fi uh, file sharing and whiteboard so jai will just show you like how 
how we can have a meet here our teammate will join the link i will join the meet and there you go they are in this way uh, the mentor and the student get communicate so moving on to our next step is yeah. now uh, let us move on to the next step uh, next module that is the trends module now we wanted to analyze the recent trends in the job market so that students get a better idea about the most in demand jobs right now and then the students can make a prudent decision about his or her own career so we found a data set on kaggle about job market from nokri.com we applied data visualization methods to analyze the recent job trends now as you can see these are the most common questions that we as students occur and these are the results uh, from the analysis now uh, let us move on to the next module uh, the last module and personally our favorite module that is the resume builder now here uh, currently i'm in my fourth year until now i was preparing my resume using sites like canva to make it colorful and attractive but this year when i'm applying for my masters i realized that many universities require a professional resu uh, resume template so with this module we allow students to create their resume in this professional format now let us edit a basic resume now as you can see on the right all these are input fields and whenever we select any of the options uh, on the left we run a script and we edit the input fields on the right so we are basically manipulating the dom to build the resume now uh, editing the resume in microsoft document can be uh, microsoft work can be very tedious to us uh, i was in the placement committee and i've seen my placement officer rejecting many resumes because they they were not in properly formatted and many companies don't prefer such resumes so here users can uh, edit the, their resume and they can actually even modify the contact lines or the horizontal margin the line spacing they can even change the title case and the title style now once they're done editing the resume they can just click on print as pdf and their resume will be downloaded in pdf format and it will be saved on their local system now there's another type of resume this is the modern resume which has some advanced features like here the user can even edit the list and the points so here i can just modify the bullet points and i can change it to some other shape or i can uh, use numbered uh, points then i can also click on the show or hide sections so your users can just tick mark Wait, whatever section this has happened in the Okay. So the users can edit whatever sections they want in their resume, and only these will be uh, uh, displayed on their resume. Again, the user can download and print it as a PDF. So that brings us to the end of our resume module. Uh, so sorry uh, so we have made an export portal um for the experts who are like which we have connected on linkedin so what they can do is they can come in they, uh, they can register for it they can also log in so that they can become our experts um and then, like right now we'll just log in and show you and then once they log in they can like they have become an expert so some some things uh, so coming back to the ppt Uh, so basically, our future scope is like the first thing, obviously, is expert verification. We want to know if that person that wants to become an expert has the ability to give correct advice, so that the so that the person can get good career guidance. And like my friend said, we have already done monetizing uh, through the premium section of our website where they can talk to the consultants. We also want to start putting out ads on different sites and and affiliated links through it. Obviously, we have also used small apps like the video calling app, which you see, which is helping the small developers. Obviously, we could have used Google Meet or something, but we did something like that, which helped the small developer, and we would like to do more of that. And uh, instead of WhatsApp, maybe we can still try to do a dedicated chat system, which could be we can try to make it secure for the consultant and the student or the engineer, and that way we can improve our project. Thank you.
so uh, should i start with the questions uh, yes. Yeah, yes so hi team i mean beautiful work i like the ui it has a professional touch that every new aspirant look for i mean the moment you open a portal you want some sort of a catchy theme to get connected so i can see that catchy theme i'm a person sitting on that stuff and searching for something okay yes, yeah so to start off with this career space wala thing so career roadmap as you guys mentioned i think career roadmap is something that no one has cracked till now because i mean if you see look at online education portals every portal has their own customized roadmap for the same course when you visit multiple courses throughout net okay so this is something that no one has cracked and no one guarantees that the specific roadmap is going to work if it worked for me it will work for you eventually you will have to put in your hard work and stuff then it will work but no one guarantees that this roadmap will specifically work for you okay so then why someone should come and select your roadmap so how you going to build that trust what i see overall is like it is like a replica of what linkedin is trying to do which is which linkedin has already cracked it okay all the services that you guys are providing linkedin is also providing okay so mm-hmm. how is your service different from what linkedin is doing they also have a expert one on one advice expert video tutorials everything okay that that is on expert level so how you guys going to pitch your product to someone in the market and what is the usb of your product okay and one more thing that i notice is like i mean if i am a programmer if i select some options i mean and the result is not what i am looking for so maybe i will mm-hmm. just not select those options so i think the drop down options there itself is which should be curated uh, filters for specific domain i think we have a lot of options out there i mean if i know i am a programmer i want to select the specific options out of those mm-hmm. categories maybe based on those options the categories should be filtered out okay and one more uh, question is why stripe uh, does stripe work in india i think stripe works for only specific countries so you guys need to check that part also Uh, so I mean, uh, what is the USB and the fe- most of features mentioned? They are already there on LinkedIn, okay. And w- uh, why we are gathering data from Nokri for analyzing the trend? What if Nokri's data is not trustworthy among? Or well, maybe to start off, maybe Nokri is the go-to place. But at certain point, I mean, people go to some other domains and portals to look for more trustworthy and good reputed firms. So how are you going to build that trust among your? Uh, uh what do you say a close circuit group so that you also need to uh, come up on with and another resume builder so can i import any document to resume builder or it has to be built via resume builder so question over there uh, right yeah. now it has to be ask can i can i uh, check okay, okay. i i will uh, list down the questions and you can answer one okay. by one okay. okay and then you guys mention google not google meet and some other but right now google meet is also free right why what's the problem with using google meet mm mm-hmm. so like should we should answer the question now ha yeah you can start yes yeah yeah like talking about google meet so it just like it does not allow first point is does not allow file sharing or any like a whiteboard i guess so if a consultant wants to talk about the student student wants to send his, his or her resume to the consultant he can directly file share it is one of the feature and uh, when we talking about uh, monetizing like we thought of we should promote small developers which like this develop their project and publish on github or some uh, some website they have so we would promote the website and they would pay us for pro- co- promoting their project in and uh, like applying that uh, same project in, into our website so that's one way we thought of like we can hand, handle the finance uh, that's why we are using the, that api and not google all tradition any traditional meeting and right uh, but second, uh, since these guys are very new to college have anything in their pocket right they are still looking for a job so how are you yes. going to monetize that part at that point of time someone who is very early in their career very early you mean after school yeah. yeah school or college i mean you mentioned ki i won't use google meet and i would use a third party service uh, by which you guys can monetize but the crowd that you are targeting itself has no money to pay for it so what is the strategy yeah, just, over there so i'd like to say that even if they have no money like even something small even when uh, for example when facebook was very you were just in college so even they didn't have money so they used to take loans from like uh, 
like their friends bank and then make it forward so if they think that their project is worthy enough to be put somewhere outside i think they will take that risk so that it can be shown to the world and then maybe it can just like go boom and then everybody will start using it so it's a risk but there is still a reward then do i can just to social media right twitter linkedin this has much more ex- exposure right rather than your system so what is the usb of using your system uh we can also like uh, try to say it in a way that we can say that it's like it's like linkedin has everything like you, like you asked us that linkedin also has everything we ask for mm-hmm. but linkedin is very difficult to uh, navigate i because there are so many people with so many things around like even a sh- even like there is a professional term for a chef so even a chef can be on linkedin but right now if you see our site it's basically just for engineering graduates mm-hmm. so i think that is one of the main focuses that we have been because as engineers we also felt like a bit heartfelt yes we should do something about this because we have been like searching for internships and jobs and everything so we wanted to do something specific about it yeah, yeah. also so one point i want to add yeah, so you, uh, yeah go ahead yeah yeah about the linkedin like uh, there are prof- like many professionals on linkedin so there are some professional at a higher level and some professional at a lower level so all of the students will only just target the professionals at higher level and no one would just uh, approach the lower level so that's why like uh, let's say i want a uh, internship at google or so and there's an internship at uh, any raw, so normal startup so if i don't get the internship at google so i will just go for the startup internship So this is like this is the same way like if the uh, students are not able to contact with professionals through LinkedIn because they they just have a very high professional uh, LinkedIn profile, they will ca- they can come to this career space website and talk to the uh, like intermediate level pro- experts. Okay, to to tackle this question, since you guys mentioned this portal is mostly for students to learn and to get an idea, so how? But currently there are no recruiters on the system. so how you going to onboard this google internship guys and maybe some top startup guys so that people get invited to their company also currently we are only focusing on providing a road map some in- go about it but where is the opportunity coming coming up for a specific person uh, like uh, i didn't understand can you please just like for example i search for a specific road map for a data ml sci- ml specialist okay I yes. got to know what I need to study. I enrolled. I took some expert advice. Now, what is the next step? I know there is some opening there at Google. I want to approach Google. How do I approach them? Or do will they approach me? So right now, what we've been doing is basically we're just showing the job listings that are there on Google, right? But okay. uh, maybe in the future, like if we see like uh, our country has this site called Intern Shala. Uh, intern shala is basically where all the companies put their internships on it and then students can mm-hmm. uh, students can apply through that site and uh, mm-hmm. intern shala gets a small amount of that transaction when it's made so maybe we can do something like that companies from like around the country or like if it's a bigger scale around the world can put their internship or job posting on this directly so that once they talk to the expert and then once they get an idea ki i want to do something in uh, maybe ai ml or api integration they can then they can apply for the jobs available on our site self and okay. also our problem segment uh-huh. mainly focused on uh, sorry yeah go ahead yeah the problem segment mainly focus on career recommender like and what career the student should go for uh, the job perspective was i guess in the future scope so we didn't implement it yet okay fine and uh, what about the payment gateway stripe why specifically stripe yeah uh, because uh, we didn't want to implement an actual payment portal we just we, we were just some searching for something uh, for dummy payment so uh, oh, we didn't okay. want an actual payment so stripe was easily doable so that's why we chose it uh, for now mm-hmm. okay. yeah i also and since have payment I... sorry also there are many options yes. to implement mm-hmm. the payment gateway and stripe was the easiest to implement and for now it's like it's uh, it's in testing mode na so that's why we are we thought uh, stripe would be good to just show for the de- demonstration uh, the cool google there are many apis for you uh, google upi is also there uh, the package in javascript but it was a little complex to implement so stripe was easier and we have done many projects on stripe stripe earlier so it was faster also cool, cool. for just for the demo purpose you guys use stripe accepted fine 
Yeah. And 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 from the perspective of resume builder, I was expecting that I mean you did you guys did some OCR character recognition based on that. I mean a person can come and uh, edit his resume. But since you guys mentioned, I mean the resume itself has to be built through resume builder. Mm-hmm. And after creating a resume, will that get saved to his profile, or again he will have to come and edit? It will be saved as a PDF in the system. Yeah. Okay, so so right so now, as can you edit the PDF? Edit it, no, ah, yes. not right. Uh, so it won't be saved on the resume maker section right now. Uh, it but, will be saved on your system, like when yeah, I like, I'll so, show you. So if they if they want to make changes right now, yes, we can think of this. Actually, they might have to go back and put everything in again. Okay. And, uh, okay. This is, this I cannot is upload part. a new PDF to the resume builder. Yeah. It should uh, do from start. Cool, cool. I think that's it from my guys. Uh, amazing job. Very innovative and creative stuff. Okay. Uh, I pass on to rest of the judges. Please take on. Hello. If I can go next, yeah. Yes. Uh, I mean, the I think the the amount of thought process in short amount of time you applied in the previous comment about. Catchiness of it and feature set uh, and completeness of it to provide full integration from scraping to Stripe integration in the resume builder. Uh, if it is done within that time frame, this really commandable job, really great work. So I'll congratulate on that. Uh, so a couple of points uh, I'll uh, I'll mention and also probably ask uh, because I. Uh, I kind of thought since when you were showing that I thought it's quite uh, for generic uh, 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 graduates who are coming out. So this could be probably targeted to wider audience. But then you mentioned you just want to put target to engineering student. Uh, is there a specific reason? Because the technology behind it would be very generic, right? Uh, you can scrape for any any career path and allow anybody to create resume so why you said you want to restrict it for the only engineering st- student mm. i mean yeah, we thought you, uh, kind of didn't true. understood uh, because it, it kind of diminishing and constraining your scope and the business possibilities right yeah so we thought we just we should focus first on engineering because we have an engineering b- background so we sh- we thought we should just like make a perfect or top notch project for first for engineering then if it's successful or like it is perfectly working, then we should make it more scalable. And uh, while we were working on the ML part, like the machine learning part, uh, uh, the data set that we got was engineering specific. So this is that is why the machine learning part is related to engineers. But as for the resume and all, um, everyone can use it. It's not like we are limiting it only to engineers. And anyway. Okay. Okay, because I got a bit confused. Was on when pre- previously that asked, asked question you mentioned it's only for an engineering student. That's why I got a bit confused. No, no uh, career uh, mention is on the engineering. Yes. And really, yeah. I just repeat my question, which I asked to other uh, previous uh, participants as well. That the technology, what you have show, showcase in terms of scalability, uh, what you have thought and how. How you ensure that you can actually expand uh, if the usage of it it gets ex- expand? Do you really uh, have to rebuild this from scratch, or is it easily portable to something like cloud? Uh, and uh, have you uh, worked on the integration of of, of some of this? Uh, so just any thought process and system point of view, uh, if you have. No, if you want, if you want to apply it to any cloud surface, I think this project or the code base we have generated is not, I guess, compatible. If you want to connect it into cloud base, uh, sorry, cloud service, uh, and to make it more scalable, uh, we like uh, the there is an app called College Pond. There's there's a there's a similar app for counseling, so we. Just refer their idea of what they are doing and how they are famous till now because I'm still using the college pond because I'm a college student and I need counseling for my masters. So we just like got a reference from what, how are they, uh, like how their ideas is so scalable and what are their scope, why is their scope so broad? 
So we just use the same features, similar features. And also, and also we are to make it more out there. Like you asked, we want obviously word of mouth is one of the best things because like as like Jay said, college point we got to know through our seniors who used it. So we are also hoping that when some of the graduates who use this will tell their friends, and this is how like slowly, slowly you can push it out there. and to increase the expert portal like the experts in our uh, website we are we are thinking of like pro posting ads on any social networking sites facebook linkedin instagram so the users so, so the experts which are like which can help students in uh, consulting uh, so they can apply through that ads and they, they can be stored in the database as perfect okay so thanks for answering in once again congratulation of creating such a skill uh, sort of covering project which covers quite lot of aspect of uh, implementation so uh, good job on that and i guess uh, the test of the judge might ask you other question around this oh, over to you probably ari for whoever wants to yeah thanks thanks ari for Team seven, congrats! Good job on such a short span of time. I have very two specific questions. Uh, first, being you are targeting engineering students, right? And you are trying to give them a roadmap. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but I, what I see is most of uh, results you are giving are is most related to a single job. Uh, in hmm. my opinion, it should be. tune in a such a way for example i i selected data science as a field okay what are the career options in it and what is the progression see uh, ultimate goal you need to understand i, I know it's not that simple to uh, solve because as engineers come out they don't really have somebody to who can guide him in terms of career it's like ships is someone says Are data science is a good field. Everybody run be a data science. Other might say no. Security is a good field. Mm -hmm. So how how are you going to? Because this is a challenge and this is a typical challenge. So in my opinion, if you with a job role, if you can define a career path from beginner level to expert, what where he can move. And mm -hmm. secondly, uh, uh, that's one. uh related to this secondly you are scraping the data you are getting the results but how accurate are these results how, what are the patterns of which your model is looking for to give that exact result if you can elaborate that little third is yeah. simple uh, in terms of security what what are your th thoughts or your what have you implemented in terms of security yeah so we I mean, like yeah cash hunting so like the basic security uh, what we what we've done is um, like obviously our login and everything is hashed so that is the basic thing which we've done but then when it comes to other things uh, they still a lot to implement like obviously our protected hosting and all after we finish the project will be also helpful so and we also, instead of using a uh, username and password we thought we should use oauth some api uh, uh, like free open source api but yeah. we kept security as the last part of our product because we wanted to make a complete or overall architecture first because uh, okay. so yeah so we have the special knowledge for security yeah, that's right fine security we covered now coming back to the accuracy of this model can you demonstrate yeah i'll like to show you the code no no not in the code i i Ah, so the root of coding lies in C, right? So I want to see with certain options you select, it predicts an accurate output. Yeah. So, fund. Uh, basically, we got a database online. Okay. So uh, it has seventeen columns, each having a non-nominal attribute, for uh, ranging from zero to nine. So when uh, let's say not interested is selected, that means it is a zero value, and when professional is selected, it is a nine. Uh, like the digit is nine. so when uh, all these columns are filled with 0 1 2 3 9 etc numbers and according to that we are getting a prediction for the job role so when i uh, fill this input input data 
then uh, let's say i'll get a data set of like a row of 0 1 3 4 9 so according to that it will give me a prediction of what job role is uh, suited for me uh, uh, related to the database and the database is huge is of uh, nearly 10000 rows and so that's fine just give me one example for example you select certain options and let it predict based on that ac the accurate yeah. job role or so let's say I'll want to become an ML or software engineer. So database is average for me. Archi uh, software engineer, so it's architecture is needed. Cyber security, I guess, it's not needed for an ML engineer. Additional programming skill is must. Uh, average. Project Technical is needed in every domain. Like it's not yeah, never. Right. Oh, sorry. Project management, it's uh, it's optional. Like if you are a good manager in project, it's obviously good for you. It's not compulsory. Uh, let's say business analyst, beginner, communication is needed. Data science, professional. Troubleshooting, not interested. And graphic also not interested. So what I got is software tester because I have selected computer architecture, software engineer, AIML specialist was selected as professional. API integration was selected as, I guess, uh, excellent or professional. I selected it. Uh, all these, though, like the data I've selected was needed for me because I wanted to become a software developer or ML engineer. But they, okay. like, it has suggested, it's just a suggestion. It's not a hundred, like, you should do this. You should right. do this. Yes. This is a suggestion for you. And like some, yeah. like I, I'm in, if I'm in second year right now and I'm only great with my ML skills, so it will show, it will suggest me like you should become an ML engineer. But when I go to fourth year, they will teach me cyber security. And when I input those fields like professional in cyber security, then it will suggest like you should become a uh, cyber engineer, cyber security. Yes. Uh, one more suggestion. Maybe this options which you are given, if you can simplify those, because you, what you're trying to find out is the interest area of a person. And accordingly, based on that, you're going to suggest some role for him. Because mm -hmm. at engineer level, nobody's going to be expert. So that options yes. kind of don't match with what person is. So yeah, it was a little generic. By those options, which are with, which are easy to. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm done. Uh, Chetan or anybody wants to take it. Thank you. I think yeah, this is like uh, to start off with. Like it's it's really brilliant. Like you all have covered so many aspects. Like right from the front end to the MLAI to the hyperlinking, thinking about payments, thinking about like uh, the redirects. All of that uh, within like you know this one view that you all are presenting. So kudos to you all. I think that's like a really good uh, work that you all have brought in here. A couple of questions that I had, right? Like, so maybe uh, we could probably start uh, from where Arifs are left, like, which was in terms of uh, the suggestions that you all are providing to the users. So in, in a real-time scenario, like, how would you train that model? Like, so what would be a signal to say that these suggestions are accurate or not accurate? So normally, right, like, what happens in... Uh, like if we apply models and we build it and then we create it mm. like the important factor is like what and how does the model learn from the actions of the users so in the scenario that you all gave like the past page that you presented right like how would the model eventually learn you don't need to go back into it like if you could just explain like uh, once uh -huh. the once you make some selections there will be some recommendation now, how do yeah. we know that this resonated or not? And if it did not resonate with the user, or like, how does that feedback go ba goes back into the pipeline? So, like, uh, like we said before, obviously this was just a recommendation. Or uh, maybe sometimes that people just need a spark of thought. Yes, I should try this, and then maybe they might like it. So that is what we're trying to achieve here. So maybe like. Uh, after doing all this film in the form, they get the AI, AI ML specialist, but then they think to themselves, I'm not happy with this. There will, no, there will not be job satisfaction. 
on this so they can always go back to the jobs page and search again and that is why how, that is how we're trying to turn them back into the pipeline like they still have a lot more options than we're just telling them to do no acknowledge acknowledge so how does like imagine we are building that model right like or or we have used some models and we are giving that output somehow we need to understand that uh, like as we are owning that process here we need to understand that this user did not like the suggestion or this user liked the suggestion because unless we have that validation on the final output of based on the user behavior we can never train that model further or like you know tweak it further so mm -hmm. what parameter is passed back based on the user flow and actions once that page is displayed options are listed down to the user what action of the user would we use to pass back to the model to say that okay this was correct or this was wrong so obviously we've not implemented this yet so what i can think of is after, yeah. after they get it like after they get the thing you can always put like a, a feedback section like a thumbs up or a thumbs down or something just just like off the top of my head when we try to do this in the future and then like a thumbs up could be a one and then a thumbs down could be a zero and then we'll go to the database and that way we can get to know he like this user is liking this and this user is not liking the suggestion and then we can like as users join in and as as users give us their feedback we can like try to use that database then to improve our accuracy like maybe sounds, a few sounds good sounds good i think like and uh, one part to add on to it was that um, you all sort of have implemented it like i if, if i remember correctly right like after the solutions you all had written like to no more click here yeah so that was like yes. probably the last line around it like so one of the source what you mentioned second is that too right like what's the click rate over there because if they like it then there is a possibility yes. that they end up clicking yes. it like otherwise they yes. sort of like bounce out of the page so that's that's one thing that i was sort of uh, referring to that's helpful the other question that i had was um given the integration right like one of the challenges and i'm i'm just sort of like um thinking out loud because at the start that you all mentioned that you all would like to have like feedback from the real time world perspective right like yes one of the challenges that happens when we are thinking about these uh, systems is uh, we want to retain the user in the system hmm. the more the number of redirects which takes the user out of the system like we lose the user like we have to get that we have to retain the user in the ecosystem in the app in the web view because the number of times we'll redirect them out like to get them back is very challenging then they'll go into like whatever we have linked and then they'll go deeper into that and then they might remember oh we started from here and we'll come back here so so from that perspective like and links are necessary right because in some extent like links are necessary so how would you all think about uh, considering that uh, and uh, just to elaborate a bit more on that right like so say um, i'm assuming you all have given like hyperlinks uh, fundamentally you mentioned about oauth also so it, it it basically varies between like say having like a web view redirect or probably if not at this stage but you all might consider having an sdk or something to like directly keep those users within the flow or a custom chrome tab if you're using chrome so between these options or anything else like what do you all think could potentially be a solution to what you all have designed here hmm. to retain the user within the system uh like for retaining the um, users maybe we could also have a referral code or a referral system for students where you get if you refer to other students or other fellow students your friends or something you get a bonus points which we you could avail to get the premium services or maybe get more templates for your resume and for stuff like that got it no no sorry i think like i did not uh, explain it very clearly like okay. what i was by referral what uh, retain i did not mean like users to retain in the system like okay. what i meant is within the app development okay. or the web view development when we create redirects users hmm. will click on it and they will leave the site they'll go to some other site okay. yes like imagine us as a user right like if we go into some site like you know when we create redirects users go into that other page and then it's very difficult that they will come back to our page because that page will have more redirects and then they'll go more deeper into it like ideally we want to keep the user in our page as far as possible because okay. if we keep sending them outside it's very difficult to keep them back into our ecosystem right like so from that perspective uh, 
are there things that you all i mean not within the 30 hours but fundamentally things that you all can list out yeah. where you think so, that you can keep them here so like one thing that comes out of the top of my head is like there is like a page in like in that road map that we're giving youtube uh, courses right but we have to click on that youtube course and then it redirects us to the new tab so now that i think about it um there is an option to embed the videos like many sites do it and they put them like they just play it on the site like usually we don't use it but they like it's still there on the site and you can play it forward it and like do all those things so i think that would be like one of the ways like only on one of the things obviously not on everything like that's just yes we can use softwares like vimeo and just embed yeah, the videos on the site embed the videos rather than uh, yes. pushing them to the new site even for the blogs thing you, maybe yeah, the guys, users will be able to read the blogs on the site itself so they don't no, have to is, leave the site this is helpful to like and and it's 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 a correct answer right so i'll challenge you all a bit further what is the drawback if we do that <laughs> what happens if we do that like what is like and like the think of yourself as the user of the system right like if you have it there what will become a drawback if we embed it inside the page Cool. I mean, it's it's just an open thought. You could like you know think yeah. about it uh, later, but that's that's basically like the the trade offs that we might want to consider. And other factor that I was just um, you know sort of uh, curious about is that the overall thing over here is like really good. One factor which I think you'll sort of um, addressed uh, when um, Himal sir or I think like. are if sir spoke about it like so so the aspect is like when we are thinking about linkedin and uh, other uh, products right and then we are thinking about this product like hmm. they provide some services you all started off with like a very focused user base we want to get it right for that user base let's get that focus uh, segment correct and let us optimize for them and then we'll expand uh, makes sense what do you all feel like from the career perspective right like for that segment um, we give recommendations we start uh, seeing options over a period of time users realize that um, this is not what they want to do today we want to do like um, uh, piggy banking on an answer that one of you will give like we want to do like probably uh, ml engineering or like something else uh, sometime later down the line users realize that they don't want to do that Hmm. now the reason that they realize later is because they did not know what are the things that they would not like about it uh, does it make sense like so do you all see in like you know at least for me what i have realized is uh, most of these websites externally right like they they sort of gamify and glamorify every role the nuances of what is challenging and what might like interest of everyone is different right like so the nuances of what a particular role might not interest a candidate or a person is not listed out very easily and is not easily available in most of these websites so having those kind of things integrated into the page can potentially like you know help make a very differentiating factor compared to what like other uh, solutions can provide uh, just going into all those details because you all said that you don't you all would like to hear from the aspect of like what can potentially be done in real time but that's that's like those are the challenges that you know we ideally want to think about when we are going about these uh, applications okay. but great work i mean like uh, amazing work like within such a short time to have this um, built up like it's it's uh, incredible so uh, kudos to all of you all i'll pass it over to the other judges thank you great yeah in fact uh, you know this is very interesting actually uh, i am more interested in the part where you know you are somehow uh, stacking the data and bringing the relevant data up but the, the you know with the uh, with the saying is a question how relevant is the data that you're bringing it up because this this could be the one thing that could be the very big usp for you guys i mean think about it on the lines where the thousands and millions of already youtube videos available if you just search ai you just mm. search ml right millions of search results are available over say google right yeah. uh, 
you would search with a uh, with same uh, same uh, 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 same uh, image processing uh, over LinkedIn, hmm. thousands of different people results are out. Right? When you're stacking the data, is are you using any algo over there to make sure the relevant data comes up? Right? The reason that Google happened, or the reason we go to Wiki and figure out this is the only information I want, this is the only piece of information I want when doing a say college project. Right? If you get scrapped the well, while you're scrapping the data, if you are able to so build up a algo, I think that is the only thing right, that will differentiate you guys from anyone else out there in the market. This is a, a very, very interesting part that you have built in, but I believe you, you guys should focus on this and work on this part. Yeah, right now what we have done is like Google already has an excellent algorithm or uh, like recommending what URLs you should like when you type something on Google search bar, it will show you results. So it will show you the most relevant results in a decreasing order. So all the top 20 or 30, like 10 or 15 results are displayed, like the most relevant results are displayed or scraped uh, using that API. So we are just using that only. Same uh, goes with but, but what I what I mean over here is probably there is one video in the fifth page of Google because of some SEO, right? Someone yeah. dog was not in the first yes, page. Yes. Right? Yeah. If you can figure out like what is the relevant information, it's not about the SEO, right? Many a many a chances probably someone has written a great article, something which lies in the sixth page, right? Yeah. And yes. he knows nothing about SEO and all this stuff. Probably it's like in the sixth page of so on and so forth, right? If you can bring those things up, I think that's that's where you track the code around it. Yeah, you mean like uh, when I search or something in the search bar, I should just go inside the URL and scrape what is relevant inside the link and uh, display that. Data. You know, there are different uh, different ways to work around this, right? Let's not go to a solution yeah. Uh, yeah. right yes. now. Right? Yeah, just, I was just thinking that definitely, but. Uh, Hopefully, I was able to deliver my point. I think yes, uh, yes, sir. your USP would be in the search. If you're already scraping data, if you are doing the videos and the content and say, say for example, the blogs together, I think once I, it, it has to be a flow, like, you know, I come over there, I put on my expertise, I put on my career options, etc. I click, I get 10, uh, say, five different options like AI, ML, probably this, that. These are my uh, five different career options, or say choose something else, right? Whatsoever. The next flow that comes in is these are your uh, these are the relevant information. These are the relevant people. You just connect to. This is how you connect if you want to want to have a one-on-one -on -one session, right? With someone else who's probably not on LinkedIn or something. These are the these are uh, you know expert judges, and you end over there. So mm -hmm. it should be like a flow and not say, you know, home services about us in different tabs out there. I think when you give that flow to the uh, user, they will come back repeatedly, uh, repeatedly figuring out what is that career option today they're, they're trying to figure out. Mm -hmm. And then you add on with the services of jobs, etc. Down, down the line, that's uh, Try to focus on one, solving one problem than, you know, trying to solve all the different problems out there in the market. Yes. Okay. Sorry, I, I had just one question uh, around like so the models that you all have right in the uh, solutions. What is the coverage like? Basically, are you all calculating the accuracy in the code, and then how are you all calculating the accuracy over there? So we so like, tried. Yeah, we tried three different models, uh, like uh, random forest, decision tree, and KNN. So KNN was uh, gave the highest accuracy, and it was just like we didn't evaluate the uh, model using any mat uh, performance metric. We just uh, measured the um, accuracy and uh, checked the confusion matrix if there is any underfitting or overfitting of any values. So it provided 90, 95 percent accuracy. I guess. Got and and the data, what the data sorry yeah sorry, sorry. sorry data sorry. was also pre-processed and it was properly uh, all the any values were dropped it was normalized it was scaled properly so that's why we got a higher accuracy got it what percentage of the data did you all keep for uh, testing uh 0.25 or 25 
Thank you. Should I answer? Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, team. Thank you. I request Team Pegasus to share the screen and pitch the solution. Before moving forward, uh, we'll have a clip of our event sponsor, that is Jibaru. The team will be joining soon.
I request Team Pegasus to share the screen and pitch the solution. Yes, ma'am. We are sharing the screen. Talking, you are inaudible. I guess. Hello, am I audible? Thank you. Is my screen visible? Yes, it is visible. Thank you for confirmation. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, jury, uh, teammates, and uh, judges. Uh, we are Team Pegasus from Universal College of Engineering. Our, our team name is Pegasus, and our project name is EMO, which is Email Management and Operation. Uh, our member includes Mihir Morya. He is leader of the team, and he also he is also a support engineer for our system. I am Sachin Mister. I am backend developer for the system. Darshan Kundu is uh, Darshan Kundu specializes in Django, and Dhananjay Prajapati is frontend developer. Uh, let me talk about the project. It is an email management and uh, optimization system. Uh, with which uh, supports various operations such as uh, bulk, bulk email sending email through uh, secure layers and it it is very secure uh, uh, it provides security against sql injection xss which is cross site scripting uh, csrf which is uh, cross site reference forgery and middleware attacks uh, here is a tech stack uh, for web web uh, for client side application we are using web browser as the interface html css js and bootstrap for the front end development on server side we are using aws uh, for launching our instance on linux server nginx is used for the for load balancing celery is used for Uh, task management and python is used as backend uh, programming language uh, frameworks we would be using are django uh, and apis we will be using are mailion and smtp our primary database is sql like three let me walk you through the demo I lost your voice. Yes, sir. Uh, so, can can you speak uh, speak a little bit loud? I guess sure, sure, no problem. Not audible. Uh, may I continue with the text tag again? Yeah, from the same. Side. Yeah. Okay. So, in text tag, we are using uh, for the text browser. tag was fine, right? I mean, we we were able to okay. hear. Time okay. Okay. To repeat yeah. and yeah. sure, sure. I'll just continue continue with the demo. Uh, as you can see, that our primary focus is on marketing marketing teams. Uh, there are various marketing teams in on in an organization. For example, just Coca Cola has uh, seven to eight various brands for soft drinks. So they want different. Teams to handle different marketing campaigns. So for that, they can create multiple list of uh, email emails. Uh, let me show you how they they can create that. Let's say they create a home. Please, uh, thing, sorry. Are you can present? you share your screen because we are not able to see. Oh, oh sorry. Not... sorry, sorry. Now is it visible? Uh, 
No, not yet. Okay. Can you confirm the screen presentation again, please? And see. So you are in now. You can speak. Hello, Boston sir. Hello. Oh, you are in the meet right now. Yes, I just got added. Now I'm in. Yep. Thanks. Okay. What happened, Sashin? Now, now is it visible? Sashin, no, your screen is not visible. Let me reload the meeting again. Now it's visible. Yes. So sorry for the inconvenience, sir. No, no, it's all right. So what you will be understand happens to you. Yeah, I guess from network level or the network. Be comfortable. I guess. I guess now it is visible. It's there now. Don't worry. Yeah, it's visible. It's there. Yeah. Thank you for the confirmation. Uh, as you, uh, you can see that I am uh, creating cam various campaigns based on the list I get, or list of emails. Uh, which are which can be created in various way because in a company there are various teams for even for marketing like Coca Cola has uh, various soft drinks so they want to market every drink uh, separately so they will be promoting the uh, marketing through marketing campaigns using various lists that that can be created using email lists uh, let me name one of them as home they can add any short url they wish uh, they can add some default email address let and any url they want uh, if they want to import any csv file they can just select from the csv file as well uh, but for now let let me add just one user that is uh, one of my email addresses As you can see that the my email address is added into the list. Uh, also, the the company needs the their email to look professional and creative, so they can create uh, various templates. Because an email is basically a mini web web uh, website, uh, which has the HTML CSS that is common between every website. So let's create a new template. As you can see that an HTML file is opened here and uh, we can add any content we wish like uh, we can add test or random stuff on the content as well as we can change the footer from the list. Uh, and let's save and close this. Now moving forward to campaign, uh, let me create one campaign. Uh, this is the new campaign called Sasin Jandila Nidha, that is me. Uh, let me add the mailing list that I just created. Uh, we will add from. Um, since uh, Mihir is added as admin for the email at email in this tab, uh, I am adding his name, his email address. We can add subject just like a normal email. And the design design email is basically the template that we just created. So you can see that the the, the template is open. Now we can add anything we want from this and we can remove as well. 
so let me save that as well uh, if i want to schedule this then i can just select date and time as per i need Uh, now you can see that the email is scheduled for 9th October at 10 p.m. Uh, in, if I see into campaign, it will be uh, segregated into scheduled because I have just scheduled it. If the email is sent, then it would be shown into sent one. And, in, and if an email is drafted and saved for later, then it would be showing into the draft mail. Uh, if you want to send the email right away, we can do that as well. Uh, suppose if uh, by mistake I want to edit something before sending it, I can just click this as well and it would just bring me back to the editing page. Uh, let's just uh, send the package. As you can see that the uh, email was sent right away because I just clicked the send and it is also segregated into the send button. Uh, uh, there are some analytics as well like for each mailing list. Uh, if I uh, go to uh, summary, it would be showing various graphs and how many people have subscribed uh, and how many people opened and how many times the link was clicked and it would also show me the location and the gmail address which were added so the email domains which were added into the mailing list based on the uh, based on the graph that's all for the project uh, let me continue to the presentation Handing over my my to me here, Moria. So, uh, am I audible? Miss screen. Hello. Yes, you're audible. Uh, so, Sin, can you please uh, share those screen again? Is it visible? Yeah, yeah, it's visible. Uh, let me explain you the architecture first. Uh, so in our case, uh, uh, this is not visible, I guess. Uh, sir, can you just me uh, give three, uh, 10 seconds? I will, I will. No, you can explain. From my mobile. You can, no, no, you can, you can explain the flow. Uh, we'll try to interpret it. We have questions, we'll ask. Okay, uh, so sir, first we have in our case there is custom app or application which is our web browser, uh, sorry, uh, emo uh, web application and there we have email box. You can see there is an email box here which is integrated with the box and in our case the email box is none other than a message broker known as RabbitMQ which is, a, which is integrated with the email operator which is the SMTP server and then it is and further it is integrated with the email tracking API which is known as uh, which is Mailgun and Celery which will do the task management and scheduling and the further it and our and then it will be uh, provided to the end user via AWS platform uh, EC, we are using EC2 T2 micro uh, server to deploy our product so Sachin so next slide please let me explain the security features also. So, sir, uh, as you know, our uh, our topic is based on cyber security. So, let me uh, uh, explain you the security features first. Uh, that which APIs will uh, provide be better securities. 
so uh, mailgun security provides two factor authentication it is aes256 encryption it is uh, the encryption by uh, the encryption is done via tls and https so the account lockdown for suspected compromise means it means there are many fake credit card or uh, credit card generators so it, it bans those accounts also so in next uh, and it has uh, inbuilt ids system to detect the unauthorized account access so in next slide so uh, in zango inbuilt features let me uh, let me explain that uh, it is uh, in uh, it has been less previous likely uh, cross site uh, it is accesses proof uh, it is also csrf uh, protection it provides sql injection protection it provides click jacking protection it in, uh, and the main thing it pro, uh, it prevents middleware attack that is man in the middle attack so in uh, for the slide so and apart from this uh, if one of our teacher uh, sorry basic server that is django if the server would fail we have backup server also servers also such as mailgun and smtp servers and aws if we are deploying the product on aws so aws platform is a highly secured uh, uh, service providing platform which is a uh, which is a plus point for our team so let me explain the scope and scalability of the project so scope as we use aws as deployment tool it provides scalability and security i told earlier uh, nginx is used for load balancing sorry um, to interrupt and, you just have 5 minutes left to pitch your solution uh, right right sure and for load balancing we have nginx we have used nginx and there are many other services also of aws for mailing also you know uh, like ase a simple email service which is uh, in aws service which provides email monitoring and tracking uh, the use cases which are satisfied by aws ses that is delivery marketing customer notification bulk emails and auto generated mails delivery market uh, marketing means uh, a time to time delivery of market uh, of emails to the customers customer notification means if they are having some specific offers so they will notify us on time bulk emails means if you want to send 10000 users or more than crores of the users emails it will it has their they have their own server who can with send uh, they have their own customized apis which send bulk emails and auto generated mails which is done by just uh, bots uh so see next slide so the important most important thing that how our project is financially viable and what are the commercial expects you know uh, financially there are five metrics or parameters to ensure email tracking as a financial advisor you know first of all email ad, uh, as financial advisor yes sir as financial advisor it is necessary to uh keep track of the email email and monitor all because company's data is nowadays very important rather than infrastructure and other uh, investments so and as as a financial advisor uh, for a company to be in growth uh, there are five factors that is deliverability rate it ensures uh, deliverability rate uh, basically deliverability rate it ensures that email send list is up to date and it is well organized open rates the second factor is open rate it open rate is the track the percentage who have opened an email it means the content you are sending which is relatable to the audience or not if example open rate if you are uh, say, uh, example if there is a enterprise which is a social media agency so it will send those mails that which will be related to content marketing uh, their new features of applications web applications etc uh click through rate the third factor is click through rate percentage of people who click the link in an email regardlessly they have opened the mail unsubscribe rate percentage of recipients who have unsubscribed from an email and conversion rate after the email after the email open and read how many users are actually got influenced from your content basically uh that's an example you have given a youtube link and uh conversion rate means how many people have subscribed the channel using your email 
that is the conversion rate. And one just have two minutes yes. left to pick the solution. Yes, yes, yes. And one plus point is uh, while successfully implemented email marketing, uh, email marketing and this solution, it is one of the easiest and most effective methods to deliver. your brand directly to your target audience please i as i earlier said you can send bulk emails to uh, your target audience and apart from uh, commercial expects uh, for a private firm and marketing agency it can cost up to rupees 2 to 5 lakhs depending on the features means uh, as as i told we are deploying our project on aws so aws cost uh, ec2 t2 microservices the cost is around uh, 0.0116 dollars so the, we can't uh, close our server for entire day so it should remain open so 0.0016 into 9 into 24 into 30 like for 30 days i am calculating the 24 hours duration so it would cost 8.3 to 9 dollars per month so for a enterprise it's like very it's a very small amount and in 2 to 5 lakhs i am just saying the development cost and development cost will be around 2 to 5 lakhs and if if we are uh, making our own server of smtp then it may cost to upon up to 20 to 25 lakhs because uh, smtp server uh, affordability rate is more as per uh, Uh, AWS and other Salesforce, other cloud platforms, which provides email address and Mailgun API also have. There are different uh, different use cases. We will the cost will differ according to the use case. So that was my side. Uh, that's what from my side. Uh, thank you. Any questions and suggestions, sir? Uh, I will go ahead with the question. Okay. And first of all, I mean. commendable job i mean you guys have done thorough research about the costing uh, back end system and analysis of the security and all so that that shows through your uh, presentation great job over there theek okay? hai but you, something that I, but i am little confused about the title of the project like uh, is this a email client or a bulk mailer or a campaign mailer i am still trying to understand what exactly is the mo- motive and also i did not see any way how do i receive a email it was all about sending mails so can i receive a email to uh, sir uh, if there is a service in uh, mailgun api itself uh, if we mm-hmm. even that that we can receive email uh, also um, as meher said that uh, amazon ses simple email services mm-hmm. uh, it also provide uh, this features so we can implement that if we need it Okay, so let's forget about all the technical jargons. Let's forget about all the technical jargons. So, what sure. exactly is the motive of the project? I mean, do we want to build an email client, or many a yeah, times yeah. I heard about analytics, the click through yes. rate, the delivery rate. So, what exactly is our motive? Do we send a bulk mailer to uh, probable uh, sources, or do we also want to pitch the analytics part of it? What exactly is the motive? analytic part part is for just for the company uh, so that they can analyze how uh, their business but the bulk mailing right. part is for campaigning uh, it is like multi See. multilateral models so they can use this for common email addresses as well as for bulk emailing so they can target their audience oh. suppose someone is subscribing to their emails uh, through their links then they should know now mm-hmm. that someone is subscribing to their mail right so that that is for the analytics part if someone is unsubscribing that they, they should know like enterprise should know that is for the okay, enterprise fine. but yeah yeah I so you also mentioned somewhere a uh, uh, somewhat so you also mentioned somewhere i mean you also mentioned that i mean you have also taken care of sec- sql injection different security aspects yes sir yes sir so yes. don't you think you guys are also injecting some piece of code into your email tracking just to track the A open rate, unsubscribe rate, which no other client does. So yes, isn't sir, that uh, a bit subtle for the users? I, to, what if I blacklist your domain? And no one will open your email itself. And the bulk mailer has already subscribed, uh, paying uh, some amount just for bulk mailing. But yes. what's the guarantee that the customer will open? Does the investment sound great? 
So what is the so use of there are your uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, let me explain uh, what is that the as well. Of your product? Uh-huh. Go ahead. Uh, as you said, the SQL injection, but uh, even Amazon is not, if I, I speak about Amazon, not AWS, they also mm-hmm. have various features that are related to SQL and Mongo or other databases. Even they are not as secure as uh, uh, best world, world's best security. But we all we use that, right? Yeah, no. So, Sasin, the question is not about. Most, yeah, let uh-huh. me. Come, I am coming to that as well. Uh, ah, come to the uh, point. Yeah, okay. Right. Yeah. So they have a very very high level of developer, and they can implement that uh, very easily. But if since we had very less time, we were able to implement very basic of SQL injection and CSRF and other. Uh, the security features, but uh, even Instagram uses Hello. Django as the backend because they, the Django provides Django provides built-in security, which is on par with uh, various other uh, various other services. Uh, like BlackBerry also uses Django for most of almost seventy percent to eighty percent of the products because it provides provides built-in security, but we cannot say that everything is totally secure. Uh, yeah, but why do we want sir, I security? Oh, sorry, hello. Uh, sir, sir, actually, I want to say itself is a framework which is uh, secure. Uh, in the other way, we can say that the code has been uh, segregated in the components, and SQL injection can be happened uh, in the URL. Mostly in the URL, the SQL injection has been happened. So for securing basic security uh, we are using a uh, post method which uh, does not actually uh, display the details which has been filled and by clicking the submit button we cannot see the details of the user which has been submitted in the url and django uses gk to be to algorithm one question here to tackle this why do we need yes. a url since it's email client the email will be coming directly to your inboxes right so that what is the URL is, doing over yeah he is speaking about django urls that is the uh, views that are created like functions the functions that we create into django or any web application in fact uh, they are used uh, they are used by, by using the uh, path of the function into the file right so the url he is speaking about is not the url that we click on uh, the link but it, he is speaking about the URL that is pro, that is provided from the Django uh, views dot py file. Okay. Hello, sir. I want to say uh, sir uh, one of the points yeah, is that we have mentioned that we are uh, providing a security uh, which is in man and middle. Okay. So this attack basically happens on the URL basis. So if the user means the admin fails the form uh, means providing or creating the campaign, then the after submitting it will redirect to a certain url so we are providing a basic feature which is provided by the django uh, that is uh, specifically secure because we are using the post method so just a question here to tackle this so man in the middle Sir, i want to on a url or between two connections Sir, i want to say something yeah please give your no, team leader word. a chance yeah. to speak for a long time <laughs> yes Sir, uh, actually, uh, for uh, sir, can I speak in Hindi a little bit? Yes, Hindi will also go, Marathi will also go. I mean, yeah, you are comfortable. Yes. Uh, so, sir, we have done the email tracking and monitoring. Hai na. Sir, we have done the legal side. Mein, ye hum employees ko track karne ke liye ye karte. Like, you know, in the enterprises, there are ethical hackers who track company's employees. Ko track karte ki, like, company's data is going out of the company. उस चीज के प्रिवेंशन के लिए हम लोग मॉनिटर एंड ट्रैकिंग कर रहे हैं ये एम्प्लॉइज के लिए रहेगा ये लीगली बिकॉज़ डेटा इज इंपॉर्टेंट कंपनी का डेटा इज इंपॉर्टेंट रादर देन अदर इन्वेस्टमेंट्स एंड यू नो इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर्स मेड या ठीक है फाइन आई नाउ आई एम कमिंग टू अ डिफरेंट टॉपिक आई मीन आई फील टू बेस हियर बट आई डिड नॉट सी एनी क्वेश्चन आफ्टर यू या गो अहेड कंप्लीट या सॉरी सॉरी आरिफ या नो 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 यू गो अहेड आई विल टेक अप टू यू yeah so i mean i saw that mail being sent as a bulk and campaign but there was no option of adding an attachment or an image so did you guys think about it how to do that 
yes sir we were oh, actually yeah. thinking That's about good. that yes sir we were thinking about that as you see saw that we can add csv file very uh, easily into django but that is also available for html as well we can add uh, the if i want to add an image then i can just use image tag as well and just provide the url or whatever file i have and just add it to it so there is no issue with that uh, like if i want to uh, send an send an image from my google drive account then i can just copy that google like google drive link and paste it into the uh, html that you saw into the template file okay so uh, a very noob question theek hai main ekdam layman insaan hu theek hai maine aapka service khareed liya और मैंने बहुत सारे मेरे गूगल और जी मेल में आउटलुक में मेरे बहुत सारे क्लाइंट्स है ओके मैंने उन सबको मेल भेज दिया आपके प्रोडक्ट के थ्रू ठीक है अभी जी मेल के पास आएगा जी मेल के पास तो ये सब स्पूफ डिटेक्शन ये सिक्वल इंजेक्शन कोड इंजेक्शन ये तो डिटेक्ट कर देगा वो तो मेल को पहले ही ब्लॉक कर देगा आप लोग का मेल तो उस केस में इसको कैसे हैंडल करोगे Yes, sir. I am coming to that. Uh, yeah. If if you we have read the documentation of Milgan API, uh, the feature you are speaking about uh, the email that are going into spam box, right? Mm -hmm. This yeah. So the AWS, SCS, as well as Milgan, both both of these provide a paid service which we could not afford, so we didn't apply here. So they provide a verification. certificate that is a digital certificate that verifies the user or who is the sender and uh, mm -hmm. if the certificate is valid and verified then google doesn't put that into the spam so it basically creates a digital certificate theek hai arif sir you want to go ahead Yeah. It follows uh, actually uh. digital signature follows different protocols such as X509, which uh, deals with authentication and the user is authorized. It defines that. So digitally signature uh, signature certificates, uh, not certificates, mails would be only allowed to send via mail. Otherwise, it will be like get blocked through Gmail. Arif sir, please go ahead. <clears throat> Yeah. Uh, Osman, you're done. Yes, I'm done. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, a uh, team, a uh, good job. At least uh, from security perspective of the meal, whatever is available on the cloud native platforms, uh, you at least load them and implement it. That's a good part of it. uh see what i understood overall your solution is kind of a bulk mailing solution uh yes. where somebody just subscribes you have two types one is somebody subscribes to your mailing list and other those are uh, the clients uh am i audible audio is breaking yes sir if we can hear you yes sir now you are audible yeah Yeah, yeah. So I'll just cut off my cam. Maybe there is a speed issue. Sure. Okay. <coughs> so uh, basically, I was saying that yours is a bulk email solution where somebody can have a subscription list and uh, companies can utilize the subscription list to target their customers, right? So in this, yes. uh, there are two things. One is uh, delivery of the mail plays an important role because uh, you should ensure that. the customers who are paying you their mails get delivered and now if you have seen a uh, email security solutions uh, by design uh, see uh, even boston try to ask same thing how is your system not going to be blacklisted by a yes sir uh, mail server who is receiving yeah. a mail because native yes, aws things or you can use but there is no guarantee that your mail will reach a mailbox secondly it reaches a mailbox the spam engine on the other side does not flag it as a spam okay yes sir so i can and in this security plays a important part uh, yes sir if you have explored a solution maybe you have not implemented it but at least from that perspective i would like to know what 
what would be your thought process for implementing that the mails are getting successfully delivered and not getting blocked yes sir uh, let me explain that again uh, they, uh, there are digital certificates which are used to verify oh no website. that's a wrong answer I, I'll, I'll 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 come to that uh, I'll, yes sir that digital signatures is not the right way certificate See, sir, uh, you have to understand an smtp protocol protocol the mail server yes, works on you know, smtp protocol okay yes, in that a certificate you can use is not to talk with a remote server but to establish yes, your identity digital certificate yes, is yes. used to establish your identity okay so there are different settings which needs to be done at the server level at a dns level so that a person or the server who is accepting your mail does not reject it uh, if your answer is digital certificates uh, i am sorry to say that's a wrong answer uh, secondly mir uh, you had answer that uh, this solution can be used by enterprise to track employee uh, or they are doing any data leakage uh, sorry my friend uh, companies don't use such tools for employee tracking there are different tools which are used for data leakage those are data leakage solution those are not any well related to bulk marketing okay uh, if you have any other answers to this most welcome to hear that sir uh, one thing we can do as you got from the server side we can use a uh, premium version of rabbit mq and uh, or kafka which is either both are same i guess from as per my knowledge uh, they can uh, means they can define the messages and emails are uh, they are actually the message brokers so they will decide that uh, our mails are authorized or not either we can use kafka or now as message broker means kafka is yeah, i guess you may go back more premium yeah. than rabbit yeah, i i heard you yeah sorry in the interest of time go back and learn three protocols one is no tam dev spf second is dkim and third is dima go learn them and see how it works this will solve your problem yeah and one more thing i would like to add a uh, one more thing i would like to add to this i mean you also need to check how the pop protocol works you figured out yes, smtp uh, yes, but you tell me everything mail provides the pop protocol i have seen that like never used it but seen that yes and kafka and rabbit mq are message queues and that is a different all con together concept nothing related to emails and stuff yeah thank you for the knowledge sir we, we are very enlightened thank you thank you sir thanks guys i just yeah so there anything else yes, i'll just no i just i think uh, most points are covered I'll, from my side i'll just say a couple of thing is uh, the overall consideration of technology stack and the depth of uh, uh, knowledge and implementation you have shown in the short time is quite uh, remarkable Uh, and probably some of the project i felt uh, from the uh, core of the knowledge point of view was uh, uh, kind of uh, well not lacking but you have shown quite good uh, depth around it but there are certain areas which you need to uh, sort of think through uh, when you want to uh, uh, build a secure uh, 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 sort of uh, uh, secure product which is usable then there are various area which you you are lacking but i guess that will come through the experience uh, so i think you can work on those part but uh, good work so far thank you sir thank you sir yes yeah. chetan sir was uh, really good no i mean yeah it was uh, really good like you know like a really good presentation and the effort and commitment towards this is like uh, you so thank you for bringing that forward and uh, another thing that i would also call out is like uh, the idea is like the intent of feedback is not that you know there are like specific gaps but more from the perspective that you know you all can get to learn and like understand how these things eventually uh, pan out so a uh, great job and like i think yeah in the interest of time i have no no questions as such and um, good luck for the um, hackathon Thank you, sir. Thank you. We actually learned a lot during this hackathon.
it was a great opportunity yes, thank you team all the best thank so you. should we leave the meet unless if someone else has a question if not like then yes i'm good right, uh, yeah. we congratulation again good job thank you sir thank you sir thank you everyone for hearing us thank you team thank you judges until the next team join let's watch a short video request you to turn your cameras on and you can start your pitching and share your screen and start it hello sir am i audible yes thank you yes sir yes. okay we will just share the screen Sir, is our screen visible? Yes, it's visible. Okay. Okay. So first of all, good good evening, everyone. So we team Bug Breakers. Our team members are Tanuj Bodikar, Saurabh Jagtap, Omkar Suryavanshi, and myself Kedar Malak. So our problem statement was to implement network security scanner. so as we know everything nowadays is online so an opponent or an attacker can identify the services or any kind of open services and recognize any filtering systems in place secondly network scanners are most important in businesses so that uh, they can determine security measures to implement it thirdly uh, we can protect the networks information systems and the data against major threats moving towards the problem statement our problem statement was to scan for the vulnerabilities on the website secondly to find which ports are open for a specific ip address thirdly to uh, eliminate unnecessary open ports and services and uh, like suggest the user to like close the ports okay uh, over to tanuj hello everyone um, so So there are mostly the two common types of ports uh, on modern networks. Uh, they are known as uh, TCP and UDP ports. Uh, both ports uh, types are built on the fundamental IP that works uh, that works on the internet uh, and home networks. Uh, open ports uh, does not uh, immediately means a security issue, but it can provide a, uh, the attacker a pathway that can exploit. uh shortcomings uh, like uh weak credentials and having no uh two factor authentication so the like uh so here we can see that uh, the port 
which is the DNS uh, DNS port. Um, it is the most uh, uh, like uh, um, used for application and uh, it has a very poor uh, and it can attack uh, the attackers can uh, easily uh, attack on that port uh, because it has a amplification of uh, distributed denial of service attack. Uh, so these are the ports which can be easy, uh, which uh, are open by default and uh, it can uh, it can create a, a pathway for attackers to attack on this port and uh, and uh, let uh, create a credentials thief and many other things. So the technologies used over here are the Python and in the Python we have used like uh, packages uh, named as URL split, which is uh, which does like segregating the HTTP and HTTPS ports. Uh, we have also used the uh, uh, Rs parser, which parses the things like UDP ports. Uh, the sys is like uh, we have also used a sys uh, package in Python, uh, which majorly does like the secure uh, system things, and the, we have also used the OS port a package, uh, which mainly communicates with OS. So I'll let Pais to own card. So yes, uh, I'll tell about the implementation which we have done. So with networks becoming more and more complex, it has become very critical for us to actively manage the cyber security vulnerabilities. So there might be a question, what is vulnerability? So vulnerability are basically weak points of a website which can become a target site for a hacker. Means a hacker will make the weak point as a target site and enter that website to manipulate the data. So uh, as mentioned in the problem statement, we are going to scan the vulnerabilities on the basis of threat levels, which are uh, critical, medium and low. So the vulnerabilities can be exploited by open ports. So what is an open port? The open port is a port which is uh, open for communication, means it can be used to send and receive the data. So the uh, open port is a doorway for the hackers to enter a website and manipulate the data. So in the execution part, uh, we have uh, identified the open ports for a specific IP address using a GUI. Um, thank you, Ankur. Uh, a remote attack is a malicious action that targets one or more networks of the computers. Thank you, remote. Uh, thank you, Ankur. A remote attack is a malicious action that targets one or more networks of the computers. The network attack does not affect the computers, but attackers will find out the vulnerability. Okay, so these are the some references like the Shodan website, Kinter website, and the Socket website. Okay, so we will just move towards the demo bar.
so so this is the gui so we have made this gui with the integration of two particular features like identifying the open boots and the other feature is like um, finding the vulnerable like finding the ports which are vulnerable and are easy to attack so the attackers can uh, have a pathway through this port so we are uh, creating like a terminal and providing the user that it, this port may be a pathway to attackers to prevent prevent this port and just have this particular So in this, like the port 21st, 26th, 22nd, uh, 25th, and 53th port is open, and it is vulnerable to attack. So we are providing a uh, user that this particular five ports are open and are very vulnerable to attack, and then uh, the attacker can steal, uh, steal the data, like credentials and many other uh, files that may, that may be present in the user system. Uh, we, we will save the result. So it'll automatically save the result and it can be useful to the user to just check the ports manually and then it will be a great okay okay so secondly we have implemented the vulnerability scanner okay so I will just start it. So now it is checking for the like uh, total we have provided 80 security checks. Okay, so one by one it will check for it. And I will just tell that uh, it is going to take a lot of time. We have uh, taken some sample outputs from it. Uh, so I will firstly show them the sample outputs which we have taken. Sorry to interrupt, but you just have five minutes left to pitch your solution. Yeah, sure. Okay, so these are some sample outputs. Okay, so like we have entered the erp.vct.edu.in website which does not have an SSL certificate. So it has an HTTP port. So it is providing a threat level that it does not have an IPv6 address. So it is good to have a one. So we are providing the uh, vulnerability definition and the remediation like to it is recommended to implement IPv6 more information on all like that thing okay so whole remediations we have provided and these are some low level threats like some ports are open then perform a full scan manually and their defini definitions and the remediations and third thing we have a medium threat level like to found subdomains with a mass and again with the same the definitions and the remediations so we will just okay so now it is scanning it is going to take a lot of time so we have just taken the uh, sample outputs from it so it is easy to show. So in this particular uh, this particular feature, we have provided the uh, domain name as erp.pc.edu.in, which is not a secure link, and it may be uh, it may be vulnerable to when uh, the attackers can attack at the IP v six through the header. So it is, uh, it is not using the header, so it it is vulnerable. And IPv6 has uh, its complexity and efficiency than IPv4. These are some. This is what you implemented. Some of them. so uh, these are the only things that we have implemented till now like the port scanner which scans all the ports for a particular ip addresses and secondly the vulnerability scanner okay so we are providing the domain name for uh, a specific domain name through which we will uh, do the 80 security checks and find the uh, find the vulnerabilities through it
sorry to interrupt but team you just have 2 minutes left to pitch your solution uh, yeah we have done with the implementation part the we have shown the port scanner and the uh, this thing vulnerability scanner right thanks guys i mean i will start off with the questions i know this is arif sir's domain so i will take less time and give more time for no, most than all all yours <laughs> no 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 you can take full time no problems <laughs> so guys j- just note down the questions i mean you can answer it one by one theek hai okay sir just so i am little confused about this product okay how is this different from a, a normal internet security app theek hai and what is the target audience okay and also i mean all almost all latest operating systems come with an inbuilt firewall in it so if someone has a firewall enabled though you were able to scan the ports and all i mean can you still get inside okay that's one question so and one more question is how are you going to bundle your software is it going to be a stand alone application or is it I mean, i'm still confused about that part too and will your software work on a mac operating system you were targeting windows and linux will it work on a mac operating system and how you going to bundle this app if you want to pitch it to some vendor okay and uh, you showed us some ip address for port scanning whose ip address was it i mean was it that on a local machine or someone else's machine uh it's a website erp uh, dot vct dot edu in okay and if you guys could also show us the demo of how you can get in and steal some data i mean some some friends machine where you try to get in You scanned a port, and you also showed us. I mean, how your scanner can help detect this scan vulnerability scan from the other side when this was happening. That would have been an amazing demo. Okay, so I mean, you can go over these questions one by one and answer, and then the other judges will take over. Okay, so first of all, our motive of this project was to just like create a simple GUI. Our main motive was to provide the functionality. Okay. so first thing uh talking about the bundling uh that is what django wala so 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 we have implemented so we are so our aim was to implement the features of it now we have implemented three features like identifying the open ports website vulnerability and the vulnerabilities in the ports so we can we can uh, we can recommend the user so that this this ports are vulnerable that's the problem statement of our uh, project and so like we are in the future we will implement uh, django uh, framework to implement all to integrate all the features we have set uh, in this set uh, by providing a e- easy uh, access to the user so that user can check the ports and it, uh, it it and our system will display the uh, the needed ports which are open and are vulnerable so we are providing you you uh, user to just check those ports and create necessary security uh, measurements uh, okay talking about uh, like the uh, like it is running right now on the linux and the windows operating system so we can provide the uh, cross site scripting so that it is independent of any kind of a machine right but then what is your target user i mean are you going to ship it as a script yes, sir. Or, mm-hmm. or an application so you have asked for our ta- target audience ha uh-huh. so uh, we may give our product to a uh, website which is newly built so uh, uh, in a concept of vulnerability a vulnerability is not created by anyone it is already present in the system so we have to detect that vulnerability so if a new software is launched or anything else is there so it may be a target audience okay arif you want to take over oh uh, yeah i'll wait wait let's other also take Okay, uh, Chetan, you want to go ahead. Chetan or Himal? Yeah, I can. I can go. Ahead. I, I mean, so I think that sort of one aspect is what Boston was covering. Uh, I, I would probably 
well more on to it the market of it right i mean there is always a huge uh, market of the security tools both from the enterprise side and consumer side and especially when whole world is now moved towards or accelerated to move towards digital i think some of these tools uh, would be really helpful so i mean uh, what you have shown as a few features about scanning basic scanning of uh, open ports onto somebody's machine or somebody's hosted web web application or website uh, how can you present this in more usable manner for them and uh, is it really uh, going to help them to identify vulnerability and also mitigate them and uh, your tool is actually going to penetrate or not i think those areas something if you can explain more that will be uh, useful yeah so as i said that in the future we will implement all those features in a particular framework using the django framework so and we can we will implement uh, like uh, a user, a user can provide, can provide the, it's like a user has created a website it may be vulnerable to certain ports and it will uh, submit that uh, do domain name to a site so we'll uh, almost like 80 security checks are done um, so it will create uh, all the report and it will, we will provide the report uh, through the framework so that this particular security checks uh, uh, are uh, highly critical for that thing so we will uh, also provide the recommendation uh, that this that this this things will uh, uh, will be will, will defend the uh, particular vulnerable and it may provide uh, overall security measurements okay uh, like uh, yeah. talking about uh, like when we are like going to deploy it and what will be the features like one major features so like we can provide with the strong networking features like uh, with smartphones laptops and other devices connecting to a network so the capacity load balancing uh, is an important aspect of it so like today's uh, networks are going in complexity growing in complexity and like uh, our security solution should be able to control this complexity no matter how old or new the uh, infra infrastructure comport components are if it is connected to a network we should uh, see it and should be able to control it okay uh, that's good yeah thank you uh, so we are all we all on plan in the future like uh, mm -hmm. With AI, sir, we are fusing with AI, sir. Like taking the data, we will we'll use the online machine learning. We will take the data which uh, like uh, like the security threats which are occurring at particular utilization of the PC. That uh, while utilizing, uh, like if like a CP is uh, it at a eighty percent uh, utilization and certain ports may be open, so there is a chance that attackers can attack to the port. So by machine learning. Online machine learning we will continuously take the data that at what uh, particular optimization that the threats is occurring. So we will train the machine learning model and recommend the user that at this particular thing uh, the attackers may attack. So we will, uh, we will use necessary uh, security measurements to tackle that particular to tackle that particular uh, thing. Fair enough. Okay. Thanks for that. Yeah. Uh, Chetan, you want to go? Or no, no. You you could go first. Like this is like <laughs> your core area. So I'll just. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, so primary three questions. First is uh, related to the app. You showed that you have a vulnerability scanner, and you showed two things, right? One was a port scanner. Other was kind of a vulnerability scanner with 80 checks, okay? Uh, so given there are so many open source scanners which are available, which reach your plus reporting, why would I as a end user go for your app? Okay, that's one, question number one. 
okay uh, second would be uh, in terms of uh, vulnerabilities okay so every day on average there are 60 to 70 between say roughly 60 on per day new vulnerabilities are released okay and your basic checks right now in total are not more than say 150 okay so how are you going to keep up with the pace in a rapid pace which with the vulnerabilities are getting released and how is your software going to address maybe not now in future okay third is if you scan any system uh it is going to impact the performance of that system right because the scanning is intrusive scanning so how is your scanner tuned to handle this so sir like the i will talk about the fourth point right now like uh, if the pc has uh, too much of load then how we are going to uh, handle this scanning purpose so what we are tra trying to do is that uh, we will first test the cpu usage like if the cpu usage is less than 10 percent okay so we will automatically start the scanning purpose and if the like cpu usage is more than like uh, like after us some percentage like 10 20 percent okay like more than that that we will uh keep that program idle okay so like the main thing is when the cpu usage is less we are going to run that uh, scanning purpose scanning thing and yes yours is an agentless scanner or agent based scanner agentless so, if it's so, an so I would like to uh, answer the third question that you asked, like scanning just, just, any just system. Yeah. So, if it's an agentless scanner, uh, what is the mechanism for you to know that the system at which you are running a scan is operating at say X level? Uh, like, uh, yeah. So can you elaborate more sir? Like you are running a scanner, right? You are just throwing some request, okay, to detect a port which is open, and from your database you will tell whether this port. So that communication which you do, you're throwing some requests on the server, right? And the server has a capacity to respond to certain number of requests per second. Okay. One is how do you optimize this? Second, you said it's a agentless scanner. So what request are you going to send to the server so that it tells you that I'm X percentage loaded and then you optimize your number of requests. So uh, in our uh, side side vulnerability code, we have, have some weaknesses like, like we are running some uh, codes, we are running some security web checks which are not necessary today, uh, like the harvester and uh, slow uh, slow rise, uh, which, which, does, which does not have a major part in the security part. So we will remove that part. So it will increase increase the efficiency of the code, and it will uh, like precision. The accuracy will also make, get improved. Thanks for the answer of your first question. We use the uh, three-way answer technique for the establish the connection to the user. First, we will uh, send our request to the uh, uh, request to the user, and if, the, if the, that port is open, then it sends some acknowledgement to the uh, to us. And if the path is free, then we send our uh, data to that. Uh, Yeah, can we get the uh, answer to another good questions? Then I will come, I'll summarize it last. But... Sir, uh, there was a question regarding uh, vulnerabilities. 
so uh, we can uh, make penetration testing so basically uh, pen tests are uh, used to scan the vulnerabilities that an uh, attacker could potentially exploit so uh, we previously uh, will have knowledge about the vulnerabilities which are exploitable so the attacker could not attack our website so like we can use this So a uh, few suggestions there. So see, uh, what I understand is uh, you are using certain components or ready-made scanners and then integrating them and doing a scan. Okay, that's good part of it. Okay, but there are other equally mature products which are still free and available. So you have to think what would be your USP of your product so that it can be some kind of a reporting which you can give better than them. Because the problem with open source, as you all know, is uh, you have to get into crux of everything because nothing, if it's free, uh, it's going to churn your mind. It will not be straightforward, everything. Uh, reporting, especially in open source, are not good. So if your reports are good, maybe that, that can be a USB for your product. Uh, just a minute. Uh, second would be uh, in terms of optimization of the resources. See, basically you have to have some kind of a logic. A simple logic would be uh, you have to first determine what the operating system you are running the scan against. Okay. Based on that, from several plugins which would be available within your checks, you can fine tune and see you only, okay, if Ubuntu is an operating system. Out of 85 checks, I run this 15 checks, which are relevant to Ubuntu. Rest, I, I don't know. So that way you can tune down the performance and plus the impact on the server which you're scanning. Third is, uh, it is not uh, humanly or a group, as a group or an individual to keep up with all the vulnerabilities which are released every day. So you would need to integrate with some kind of a threat intel source, which would give you a feed, which is up to date. And maybe then you can utilize that as a feature and detect new vulnerabilities as and when they come. Uh, that's, that's the suggestion from my side to you. Uh, Chetan, you want to take it forward? no thank you yeah i think a really good presentation i enjoyed like the way you all you know specifically bifurcated the three problem parts of the question and then like addressing each of them i think that was like super super valuable uh, on a very high level like just one thought that i wanted to share first is that um uh, in in the questions that were asked right unkar you mentioned that um you sort of gave the exact state of what is happening today that there is a breach and then once we the whole idea over there is that we are identifying the breach and then we are trying to fix it so that's like a reactive behavior uh, and that's what i believe is most of the industry working towards right like and then um tanujiu basically counteracted that statement by saying that uh, we are thinking about going about building with mls and trying to do things where we can fit 
give proactive identification saying that this can potentially result into a breach in a scenario like this the ideation factor that i would want to like you know uh, emphasize on is moving from reactive to proactive like the more we will be able to sell products is when we are saying that we are able to identify that this can happen like imagine of insurance right like why does insurance run so well like it's not because of the fact that we are sick it's because of the fact that they sell saying that people will fall sick and you need this fall sick. Mm -hmm. And and that is the way I would recommend and like you know suggest you all to think through like these uh, areas, especially in terms of security and all, where it's like very challenging to explain and convince that this is going to happen. So that's that's like a very high level one that I wanted to like you know call out first. So that's like good. Like I mean the work that you all have been doing is like super helpful. A few detailed questions that I had, I mean, maybe just one in the interest of time that I would like, you know, sort of uh, try and understand is um, a part of it was already addressed, like where we are thinking, like, I mean, was already asked, like, if we have proxy servers, if we have these other systems, then how do we sell what you all are uh, trying to build over what existing mechanisms the companies might have? Because those like are the first step of security that we are thinking about which is easily identifiable right like then how does this add value that was the first part around it and then the second one is i i did not entirely get it and this could be because of like a limitation of my understanding of this whole space itself is how does this affect like it would be different for different places right like so say if we shut down a port like the load balancing would eventually become a big factor like how are like, especially if there are good users and bad users both tuned in from the same port like so then how does that take in gets taken into consideration or maybe i am like misunderstanding this part and then the other factor that i wanted to call out is um, risk in how would you differentiate a risk between like something which requires more security versus something which requires less uh, an example to piggy bank on the previous one is live web streaming right like there's a cricket match going on and we want to have like live web streaming versus like a video call which is uh, which is happening which requires probably like more security like what factors or differentiators would you all consider in the solution that you all are building between these two uh, instances that's that's pretty much it between these two instances so I would like to answer the question. So I like, so we have a feature like uh, in the future scope that uh, like uh, running uh, to optimize the particular code, like minimizing the uh, minimizing, uh, minimizing the running code time and increasing the efficiency. Right? Uh, so we will run like each security checks uh, with the help of CPUs. So CPUs are made, uh, divided into many things. So it will be easier. At one uh, at one batch, it will run. So it will uh, there is an efficiency uh, in the time term. So we can use that particular feature like GPU. This I'm assuming would address like what you are speaking about with respect to like a scenario where the application is uh, very critical on time. Like say for example, like a. Uh, uh, something which requires like time is of a higher criticality than like security does that make sense or no so so now we uh, in this website uh, vulnerability scanners so we have a weakness like it's taking a lot amount of time so, so we have the idea that we can port like in a batch in the gpu so that it can run faster and give the current uh, give, the, give the output easy to the user so the user can get the output immediately in that got it and what happens in a scenario where there are like um, good users and bad users both are trying to use like a single point of entry like in a scenario of that like if we block everyone all together there is a loss right like so in in a scenario like that how would you all consider uh, uh, designing it or does this already address this uh, use case uh, use cases. Uh, okay, maybe maybe uh, to simplify, right? Like what I'm trying to understand or what is what I'm finding difficult to understand is uh, between 
the good users and the bad users like whenever we are trying to like you know sort of uh, catch hold of the bad users there would be a aspect where the good also gets impacted does that make sense because scam like scam or like basically in for that matter like security threats and breaches right like there are people who are monetizing security threats and breaches it's their bread and butter to make money out of it so that's one segment of the users and then there is a second segment of the users who are potentially good but get impacted by whatever we end up doing in order to mitigate these uh, security risk so how do we ensure the balance between these two maybe maybe i am off like i i could be off like to be very honest i could be off but the idea that i'm trying to understand is that like what is probably not very clear is like how does these two uh, get balanced so and are is yeah. like even if you think that the question itself is wrong because my knowledge in that whole space could also be like you know given what i understand of the space this is uh, probably like not a right question so please chip in if you think that the uh, question is wrong no no question is right maybe uh, what uh, what i understood is you are trying to ask is how uh, your product is not used by a bad guys where they extensively use it and it's kind of popular that if you use this tool you can easily get the bad known things in the system and instead of more good users using it for good purpose uh, it's used as a hacking hacking uh, uh, yes so, yeah i have not thought in a particular area that like good users and bad users so we have an idea like creating an uh, application which will be open source uh, like a simple application which will be open source for checking the sites so we have not uh, integrated got it uh, or differentiated between the good users and bad users got it got it no makes sense i think like that's what like makes it very complicated eventually because what happens is like the bad users is an industry they it's not like one user trying to hack one place like the bad user is in an industry they get paid they are making and minting money out of it so then what if we design something to circumvent that they'll be the first ones to fix it F by fix what i mean is they will be the first ones to understand okay this is getting blocked what do i do to circumvent this solution that you all have uh, created so having that feeded back into the system would be like a vital part for uh, continuously evolving otherwise what happens is you make it you sell it in a few days the client comes back and says i have a new issue and a new error because the whole fraud industry has identified this is uh, something that can be fixed and they'll find some new uh, loopholes but but a good presentation overall i think like i really liked it and i also learned quite a bit based on the question and answers around so thank you Yeah, team. We are done with the questions. Uh, you can keep. Yeah. All the best. Yeah. All the best and very good presentation, Abin. Very good. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you so Thank much, you, sir. Thank you, all the teams. The results will be announced shortly. I request all the judges to join the Microsoft Teams link provided to you. and we shall confirm today's results from our honorable judges till then i request all the participants and the audience to stay tuned thank you so leave here right and join team yes sir yes sir please join the microsoft okay. teams link to discuss okay. the results
Is your company facing some marketing issues? Don't worry, we have an excellent solution. Dear Digital Dear Digital is the leading digital marketing and development agency for top e-commerce brands in Europe. Although the company's headquarters is in Belgium, we will work remotely from around the world. Dear Digital is looking to expand its presence in Indian e-commerce sector and wants to train, test and hire motivated students to help them to write their success stories for the Indian market. The team has one goal, help you scale your brand sustainably as far as they can and beyond. Dear Digital hires top talents based on their performance in their internships and the new internship batch starts from October 20th. Interested in joining? Go visit the website or scan the QR code provided on the screen. We are extremely delighted to announce Dear Digital as our title sponsor for their Are you looking for something that will make your website look more attractive and professional to audience? Well, we have a solution. Natsense Technology Natsense Technology is India's premier web design and online marketing company. It is located in Mumbai and has the capacity to serve clients across India. Natsense Technology provides you with innovative, creative and interactive websites that will open new markets for your business. Napsense Technology selects high caliber designers, skilled programmers, experienced marketing managers who will drive qualified and targeted sales leads from major search engines to their website. They strive to create professional websites which will effectively promote their clients' product or services to their target audience. They listen to their clients and develop a custom made website which will enhance your corporate image. We are excited to have Napsense Technologies as a powered by sponsor.
Having trouble getting your business off the ground? Has your business grown at a slow pace? Now you all can leave the issues to this system and focus on your business more. These systems. They have been working in the field for approximately 20 years. They deal with major companies like HP and Cisco. It is a digital platform for the delivery of local services to clients. They assist the businesses to grow significantly. They also help in increasing the prospects and sales compared to businesses with no web presence. They focus on user requirements and provision of expert services to them. The G system offers a free, easy to use service to the clients.
is your company facing some marketing issues? Don't worry, we have an excellent solution. Dear Digital Dear Digital is a leading digital marketing and development agency for top e-commerce brands in Europe. Although the company's headquarters is in Belgium, we will work remotely from around the world. Dear Digital is looking to expand its presence in Indian e-commerce sector and wants to train, test and hire motivated students and will help them to write their success stories for the Indian market. The team has one goal, help you scale your brand sustainably as far as they can and beyond. Dear Digital hires top talents based on their performance in their internships and the new internship batch starts from October 20th. Interested in joining? Go visit the website or scan the QR code provided on the screen. We are extremely delighted to announce Dear Digital as our title sponsor for their
Having trouble getting your business off the ground? Has your business grown at a slow pace? Now you all can leave the issues to this system and focus on your business more. The systems. They have been working in the field for approximately 20 years. They deal with major companies like HP and Cisco. It is a digital platform for the delivery of local services to clients. They assist the businesses to grow significantly. They also help in increasing the prospects and sales compared to businesses with no web presence. They focus on user requirements and provision of expert services to them. The G system offers a free, easy to use service to the clients. My whole experience of Visa Hackathon Hello, sir. I now request Mr. Hemal Shah to share his thoughts. I request you Hi, to share. Can you hear me? Yeah. 
Shall I continue? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, so just uh, for me to understand what's the format, uh, uh, so just brief about the overall presentation, right? And hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Yeah. You want me to give brief, brief about the presentation, yeah. right? Yes, you, you can share your thoughts about the event or about the yeah, participant. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Uh, now, first of all, I would like to really congratulate all the participants. Uh, the, some of the topics, uh, what was covered and length and breadth of it was quite amazing. Uh, it kind of shows that hard work uh, and knowledge and interest shown on this subject and especially work uh, you have done in last 48 hours or so, but uh, before that as well in your study is quite immense so really congratulate on, on that part uh, and the skills uh, at this level you have shown about the uh, completeness of those application uh, presentation around it and trying to solve some of the very difficult problem which is even today for the real world quite difficult is quite uh, 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 quite uploaded for i mean i really appreciate uh, uh, for all the participants and uh, participants for sharing this some of it uh, i also learned as well so it's it's, it's quite uh, uh, interesting in in many ways uh, so an overall event uh, the organization point of view as well i would congratulate uh, you all have worked very hard to organize it very well so that's really great uh, 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 the couple of points I would also say that uh, these are the real learnings which you can carry on to take into your career, uh, whether you are just passing out as an internship or going for the next level of your st study or you are still continuing. Uh, some of these things uh, happen in almost in real world and where we work as well uh, in, in, in big banks or big organization. Technology uh, gets sometimes built in very sh short time, uh, and that's what uh, Hackathon teaches us. So I I really want to congratulate, uh, uh, and uh, uh, the result, final result, may may not uh, be in your favor, but nothing is taking uh, away from you your all the efforts. Okay, so just just carry on this. Uh, great work it will really help and i really hope to see you all succeed in your career uh, and and uh, you also end up in solving some of the real world problem so congratulations and that's it about from me for now thank you sir it was really great hearing from you i now request mr boston cherian to express his thoughts Hi team, uh, a hearty con congratulations to all the participants. I was very uh, excited about the, the topics and the depth that the participants went inside. I mean, considering the fact that I mean, it was only 30 hours and the deep dive that the candidates went, really amazing and kudos. And the choice of tech stack, I mean, going from cross-platform to front-end, uh, going into security, I mean, deep diving into AI, ML, amazing stuff, guys. Irrespective of whatever the result is, I mean, if you guys want to do internship at CRED, drop a message to me. I will definitely get you guys there. Yeah. That's it from my guys. Thank you, sir. It was really nice hearing from you. I now request Dr. Ashish Manmari to st share his thoughts. Uh, I guess many of you are not uh, over here to uh, listen to long speeches, uh, but actually I wanted to share some of my thoughts. Uh, that's why I asked the 
hackathon team that uh, they should uh, plug me in. Uh, it is almost now 40 hours uh, from the time the hackathon 2022 started, 30 hours of coding, and then almost six hours of uh, judging for the final round. So, firstly, I would like to thank all the judges who have given so much time to see all the solutions what the students have prepared. Okay, checking all the aspects very thoroughly and grading them. So, uh, hats off to all you guys uh, for such a dedication. And to the team hackathon, okay, every year when we organize hackathon, we always uh, face new challenges. Okay, this year also we had a very different challenge. Okay, this is our third online hackathon, so we are uh, quite matured on how to conduct the online hackathon but this year we had a very different challenge and that was uh, regarding the infrastructure because all our uh, labs are under innovation so we are kind of refugee uh, in our college but still uh, coming, uh, overcoming all those uh, things okay given the short span of time okay the hackathon team actually has uh, put up a great show i will say Okay, I've seen all the six editions of Hackathon and every year uh, we have tried to keep the bar uh, you know, higher and higher. And this year also, this particular team has uh, raised the bar higher. Okay, getting 90 registrations uh, is very difficult, I know, because last four or five years I've seen that we normally reach to a mark of 50, 60. They're not uh, across uh, 60. But this year it was 60, uh, 90 plus. And then uh, the question was how many teams we should have in the final round. Because if we uh, let go uh, too many teams, uh, then again it's uh, bad that we are not able to organize or have that many teams. Then why we are going for it? So finally we came down to a number of 60. So again handling the 60 teams, uh, uh, conducting the three rounds and then the final pitching round. It was a tedious task. Okay. So when the numbers grow, all the things start to become difficult. But this particular team has done great efforts to coordinate and conduct the hackathon in a very smooth manner. So hats off to all you guys. Okay, and uh, the entire uh, faculty members of IT department who have stood behind uh, Sainath party to have a successful hackathon this year also. Okay, because many of them uh, are still in the college. I know. Uh, the students and uh, faculty members are still in the college completing the task. Okay, so congratulations to all of you. All the participants uh, without uh, you, uh, this hackathon would not have been possible. Okay, the results may come in some time. Okay, uh, there will be uh, six winners actually. Uh, all the final teams which are there in the final round, they are actually the winners of their problem statements. Okay, but of course, there will be first, second, and third prizes that we will give away. But you all six teams are winners. Uh, other teams who did not qualify for pitching round also, they have shown a courage and taken a step forward to give an attempt to solve a problem. Okay, so a uh, congrat to you also. So keep coding and keep learning new things. Okay, that will help you in a long term. Okay, so thank you very much. I uh, think uh, it is the right time to close the speech because we are almost uh reaching the noon mark sorry uh, the uh, night midnight mark okay so once again congratulations hackathon team thank you sir thank you for those kind words and thank you for mentoring us hello this is ramesh yadav and i will be continuing as a co-host from here going on further i would like to invite the joint hackathon head of VSET Hackathon 2022, Divya Sakre, to propose vote of thanks. Hello everyone.
Talking about my whole experience of recent hackathon 2022 in a couple of minutes would be major task because the last one and a half month had been extremely difficult to make our master plan successful. But today, myself Divya Sakre, the joint hackathon head of recent hackathon will try to wrap up the technology, technological hackathon even plan and deliver it to you. This year, we are out of the pandemic, so we had a chance to keep the hackathon offline. But our goal for this time was really big. We wanted to reach out to a huge number of coders who are right now pursuing the bachelor's degree in any department of engineering and science. So we decided to keep it online once again for the betterment of the participants. Coming back to our goal, we successfully got 90 plus registrations for VSAT Hackathon. And this was our biggest achievement so far. We did everything we could to make VSAT Hackathon 2022 a grand and a successful event. All of this wouldn't have happened without the tremendous support of our IT staff and my team. I would like to thank our respected principal, Dr. Harish Vankudri, HOD of IT department, Dr. Thaksin Parvat, our staff in charge, Professor Sainath Patil, our teaching staff and non-teaching staff for their constant support and cooperation, which helped us in the smooth conduct of Visa Hackathon 22. We are truly grateful to all of them. A very special mention to our sponsors. Without them, the event wouldn't have been possible. Credits to all the juries and judges who took out their precious time for, from their busy schedule. It was an honor for all the participants to have such a great guidance. Credits, thanks to all the uh, participating team. And this event is because of you and for you guys. Most importantly, a huge shout out to my team. A big thanks to the whole TE and SE members. And on this note, I sign off. Thank you. Thank you, Divya. Yes, it's now time to announce the winner. But before that, I would like to share one inspiring quote from Colin Powell. There is no secret to success. It is the result of preparation, hard work, and learning from failures. Many congratulations to all your supremely talented minds. After the overwhelming response from the participants, we have some exciting rewards for six finalists. We will be announcing the winners shortly.
looking for something that will make your website look more attractive and professional to audience? Well, we have a solution. Natsense Technology. Natsense Technology is India's premier web design and online marketing company. It is located in Mumbai and has the capability to serve clients across India. Natsense Technology provides you with innovative, creative, and interactive websites that will open new markets for your business. Napsense Technology is its high caliber design, skilled programmers, experienced marketing managers who will drive qualified and targeted sales leads from major search engines to their website. They strive to create professional websites which will effectively promote their clients' product or services to their target audience. They listen to their clients and develop a custom made website which will enhance your corporate image. We are excited to have Napsense Technologies as our power response. Having trouble getting your business off the ground? Has your business grown at a slow pace? Now you all can leave the issues to this system and focus on your business more. The systems. They have been working in the field for approximately 20 years. They deal with major companies like HP and Cisco. It is a digital platform for the delivery of local services to clients. They assist the businesses to grow significantly. They also help in increasing the prospects and sales compared to businesses with no web presence. They focus on user requirements and provision of expert services to them. The G system offers a free, easy to use service to the clients.
Is your company facing some marketing issues? Don't worry, we have an excellent solution. Dear Digital Dear Digital is a leading digital marketing and development agency for top e-commerce brands in Europe. Although the company's headquarters is in Belgium, people work remotely from around the world. Dear Digital is looking to expand its presence in Indian e-commerce sector and wants to train, test and hire motivated students to help them to write their success stories for the Indian market. The team has one goal, help you scale your brand sustainably as far as they can and beyond. Dear Digital hires top talents based on their performance in their internships and the new internship batch starts from October 20. Interested in joining? Go visit the website or scan the QR code provided on the screen. We are extremely delighted to announce Dear Digital as our title sponsor for their Are you looking for something that will make your website look more attractive and professional to audience? Well, we have a solution. Natsense Technology Natsense Technology is India's premier web design and online marketing company. It is located in Mumbai and has the capacity to serve clients across India. Natsense Technology provides you with innovative, creative and interactive websites that will open new markets for your business. Napsense Technology is its high caliber design, skilled programmers, experienced marketing manager who will drive qualified and targeted sales leads from major search engines to their website. They strive to create professional websites which will effectively promote their clients' product or services to their target audience. They listen to their clients and develop a custom made website which will enhance your corporate image. We are excited to have Napsense Technologies as a power response.
Having trouble getting your business off the ground? Has your business grown at a slow pace? Now you all can leave the issues to this system and focus on your business more. This systems. They have been working in the field for approximately 20 years. They deal with major companies like HP and Cisco. It is a digital platform for the delivery of local services to clients. They assist the businesses to grow significantly. They also help in increasing the prospects and sales compared to businesses with no web presence. They focus on user requirements and provision of expert services to them. The G system offers a free, easy to use service to the clients.
worldwide, we have an excellent solution. Dear Digital. Dear Digital is a leading digital marketing and development agency for top e-commerce brands in Europe. Although the company's headquarters is in Belgium, people work remotely from around the world. Dear Digital is looking to expand its presence in Indian e-commerce sector and wants to train, test and hire motivated students who will help them to write their success stories for the Indian market. The team has one goal, help you scale your brand sustainably as far as they can and beyond. Dear Digital hires top talents based on their performance in their internships and the new internship batch starts from October 20th. Interested in joining? Go visit the website or scan the QR code provided on the screen. We are extremely delighted to announce Dear Digital as our title sponsor for the event.
The most awaiting moment is here to declare the result of VSET Hackathon 22. The runner-ups of VSET Hackathon 22 will be rewarded with a cash prize of Rs. 5,000. I now request Mr. Hemal Shah to declare runner-ups of VSET Hackathon 22. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Hey. Yeah, it is most awaiting moment. Uh, and the runners up is team at second place is Encryptor's bus tracking system. I now request Mr. Arif Bhatka, sir, to announce the winning team. I request you, sir, Himal Shah, sir, to announce the winner of VSET Hackathon 22. Okay. And the uh, first team is Team 7, Recommendation for Career in Resume Building. Congratulations on securing the first position in VCET Hackathon 2022. You have been awarded with Rs. 25,000. Congratulations once again. Thank you, sir. Thank you, all the teams. And now we had a wonderful time hosting this event and acknowledging your enormous participation with enthusiasm. The time has come to sign off for the day. Special thanks to all the dignitaries for gracing our event with their presence. Lastly, for all the participants, I would like to say, the lessons of competition are lessons for life. On this note, we sign off and thank you everyone to once again make this event and endure successful. Thank you.